what we do here is go back, 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 back. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Okay, and we should be live in theory. Hopefully everything is working and you can see and hear me. Yeah, I can hear an echo on Calf's phone, so we're looking all good. Thank you all for joining us on this Saturday evening. It is Saturday the... God, my eyesight is getting worse. 12th of August. Should just look on the computer. 12th of August, 2023. Hopefully you're all having a fantastic Saturday, wherever you are. Uh, or Sunday, if potentially you're in Australia. I think it's Sunday there already. Early hours of Sunday. I don't know. I'm not very good at geography. Never was. Ask my geography teacher. He will certainly uh, agree with that. Anyway, so tonight's stream got um, a lot of things to go through. And in fact, so much so, I've actually made a list. I hate lists. Let's just get one thing straight. I hate lists. Calf does them all the time for everything. I've always relied on just going with the flow. You've but relied on me with my lists. Yeah, I've kind of relied on calf's list to be fair but not using them yourself. there's a lot of things i've got to cover in tonight's stream so i wanted to go through them and i've even got my pen so i can actually cross them out to make sure that i get them all done trying to be professional it's probably not going to work so we'll see how things go i have a plan yeah weirdly i have a plan i actually printed out stuff although to be fair it's just basically the text from the information underneath the video so if you're not too sure what's going on you can read there and find out exactly what's going on yeah, lots of things to get through. It's been an absolute uh, damp squib. Trademark, Welly Bob. This week, the weather's been rubbish, absolutely rubbish. Apparently, this is British summer. It's far from it. It is basically October or November. It's kind of freezing. We had one day where there was a couple of hours sunshine. So I quickly ran out into the garden, stripped off, starfished in the garden. I that, speech whale. Yeah, probably waiting for uh, RSPCA to come and throw me back into the water or something. Yes, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't good. Anyway, that's enough of that. Yeah, Rick H says, I'll take the rain any day. To be fair, actually, normally this time of year, it's absolutely horrendous and we're all just sort of baking. It's, it is muggy, it's quite, it's warm-ish. 
but it's that clammy warm. It's not that nice warm where you can go out in the garden and enjoy it where there's a nice bit of breeze and you can and smell right all the nice summer things like plants growing, flowers and all that kind of stuff. It's not like that at all. It's just basically, I'm looking out the window now and it's uh, very grey. When in reality it should be full of balloons because this weekend is the Bristol Balloon Fiesta. I actually saw some balloons go over yesterday um, and heard some in the morning. What they got to do at that time in the morning? I don't know. It's not like they've got a rush to get to work or anything. They're balloonists for Christ's sake. Anyway, I digress. So yes, good to see you all in the chat. Hope you're having a uh, an enjoyable weekend, having a drink, chilling out. That is what this stream is about. So if you've not been here before, this is basically the uh, the wind down from the week. So the weekend is here. We can all start chilling. Most of you have probably got your Saturday chores out the way and it's now time for you to kick back, stick your feet up, have a drink and chill out with your favorite YouTuber. Although they're probably not streaming so you've tuned into us instead. And we do appreciate it, thank you very much. If this is your first time here, don't forget, do all that YouTube stuff, click on the like button if you haven't already, click subscribe, you never know, you might gain, to, gain. you might grow to like us eventually. A lot of you have, so there is potential it will happen. And more importantly, share the videos with your friends. It's very good because YouTube does a pretty bad job of even if you're a subscriber, letting you know that there's videos out. So share the videos to your friends. Uh, share them to your enemies if you want to. I don't really care. As long as you share them, it's all good. Uh, Wendy Bob says he's, he's already done his Christmas shopping. It feels like it's autumn. Oh, Angel's ears. Autumnal. Uh, Angel Churchill. My daughter, Kath's daughter, says hello. How you doing, Angel? We will be discussing Angel potentially slightly later. Ominous, I know. Uh, that is in segment, let me see, where we do our countdown. One, two, three, four, five. No. Did I miss that out already? I oh, know, there it is. Yeah, the laptop that may not be repaired. That is on the agenda. I will put a star there so I remember that one. Uh, yeah, Angel um, and a boyfriend. Got a laptop, well it's your boyfriend's laptop, but they, I guess they both use it. It's not great and it needs some work doing to it. I've already ordered some RAM and a new SSD for it, but it needs a new screen as well. And it's kind of, it's on the borderline of spec wise, whether or not it's actually worth pouring a little bit more money into. We're probably gonna do it anyway, just for the hell of it, for the video, but it did make me think, is this actually worth doing? Am I throwing good money after bad? Or throwing someone else's good money after bad? But we'll find out. And um, we'll get your opinions as well. Thank you uh, for <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Ugly Bob. Uh, Ugly Bob has sent us a ten pound super chat called "Bless Your Heart," and he says Siri kept on calling me Shirley this morning. Apparently, I left my phone in airplane mode. <laughs> Brilliant. And also, there are some other super chats. I should quickly mention those as well. Angels asked, "How's Brennan's laptop?" Yeah, exactly. Tell her it'll be featured. It will be featured. I just did. Uh, Ugly Bob, two pounds there. Disco, disco, disco. That is to set off the disco ball. People do that, mostly Bob, when I'm actually setting up the stream. I'm there messing around, plugging things in, and it always seems to coincide with when I'm doing something either with the stream deck or plugging in something down there. I'm leaning over. Next thing I know, I'm getting my I eyeballs penetrated by RGB, which uh, is probably my own fault for putting it there and my own fault for rigging it up to IFTTT. But anyway, thank you very much, Bob, for that. And also, we had another super chat come in from the lovely Mick Woods. Um, is Mick Woods and Jason Woods related? I've always wondered that. I don't think so. It's just gone through my head now. It's one of those questions that you forget to ask. They probably are somewhere along the line having the same surname. It kind of stands to reason that they will be somewhere, I guess. Anyway, thank you, Mick, for your £10 super chat. And uh, Mick says, Hi, Mike, Kath, and gang. See you at 11.15. Got to raid the Frid first. That's uh, short for fridge if you're from not from the UK. We often use the term frid instead of fridge. It's a thing. Uh, Peroni, again this week, can't beat a good old Peroni. I haven't had a Peroni in ages. It used to be uh, our local restaurant, Ital B, and they basically, Ital. it's Ital B. The man who runs it told me it's called Ital B. Right, there's a, down, there's a restaurant in Downend, our local village, called Ital B, but Whenever I speak to the guy who runs it, he always calls it Ital B. Like there's an Ital A and Ital B and Ital C and it's going to be a part of a chain. But I don't think that chain's ever happened. Well, where's A? 
So if you're bored, fire up Google, look up uh, BS16 5, what's the Diamond High Street postcode? What was the bank's one? Remember? QQ? 6BL, I think, got it. BL? 6BL, yeah. Diamond, look, just look for Diamond Village. Uh, you'll see it there. It's LB. It's actually a really nice Italian restaurant. Give it a good review if you can, because yeah, it is good. It is actually genuinely good. A little bit pricey, but you've got to pay for these things. They're independent, aren't they? Hang about, we're talking about Italian food, and that was definitely not on the agenda. Come so on, I'm afraid we're going to have to move on. Stuart Cleary with another super chat there. Uh, 10 euros, thank you, Stuart. Says a tub, a tublin, a tublin stay in. A tub, so a Dublin, Dublin. I put someone else's teeth in today, I'm sure. A Dublin saying, I just want to hear Mike say it. Gear up the yard. I don't You've know if I can. Bit of an Irish accent, I'm thinking how I can do that with an Irish accent, I'm not sure. But so it is on the end. But I just got to say potato at the end. Gear up the yard, potato. <laughs> that doesn't work. Sorry. Ah, oh, dear. Anyway, let's let's move on very quickly. Already off script. Yes, I I know. Okay, so uh, yeah, this week received some items of interest, which we'll be taking out tonight. Uh, there is also a special gift that we've received from uh, one of the companies that we actually work with. So I kind of know what it is. Calf had to open it. Uh, DHL opened it as well because they sent it in and on the uh, the shipping invoice it said contents and uh, they actually put nothing. They literally wrote nothing. So of course DHL being DHL and customs and stuff like that, you can't send a parcel saying there's nothing inside it because clearly they're going to open it. So they opened it and had to reseal it etc. So yes, it's been opened a couple of times already but it's something that I wanted to share with you all. So uh, we'll head on to that a little bit later on in the stream tonight. So, yeah, we'll definitely be doing that. Uh, other things, we've got some stuff to unbox. So, we've got the Thermal Take new 420mm rad. This is their TH V2. TH420 V2 ARGB is a beast. I have not tried a 420mm rad at all, ever. So, this is going to be somewhat of an experience. I thought 360s were somewhat overkill in some respects, but trying to keep modern processors like the AM5s and also the 13th, well 12th and 13th gen Intel cool is extremely difficult to do. They do spike up to these insane temperatures. So having a big beefy rad is going to be beneficial. So we'll be checking that out. Uh, also, we've got a monitor from Yama. I'm never yeah, sure. On your list. It's not actually. Uh, Yama is a company that we've never worked with before. And actually, I've always kind of secretly admired their work. Back in the day, in the early 90s, when the PC industry was kind of in its formative years, if you had an Iyama monitor, Iyama, Iyama, I don't know. How do you pronounce it? Someone help me out before I do the review. Um, yeah, I always aspired to have one of their monitors. And over the years, I think I possibly did have one or two, like a, was it like a Vision Master or something years ago, like an old CRT? And of recent years, I've always looked at them. There was, during the whole COVID pandemic, there was an area where you just couldn't buy monitors because everyone was buying up to work from home. And at times there was the uh, the Red Eagle, which was a gaming monitor, 1080p gaming monitor, 165 hertz, IPS fast screen. I really had my heart set on one of those, but trying to get hold of one was an absolute joke. But obviously now that era is somewhat behind us. Monitor prices are coming back into more sensible realms. And they've got an absolutely cracking monitor, which is... Iyama. Iyama. A-Y-E. I. Iyama. Iyama. I'm going to do that in the review. That, that'll upset them, probably. Or make them laugh. I'm not too sure. If I do it with my Ali G stuff on, which I've still got, it's still out there. Do you want to hit less? No. That's, that's no. No, no, cool. no. No, no. It's not going to happen. It's not on the list. Um, yeah, I'll do, the, I'll do the review for the Iyama monitor in the style of Ali G and see if they send me any of those after. It's unlikely that will happen, but we'll uh, we'll see. So anyway, yeah, they've sent over the Red Eagle 2470HSU, which uh, yeah looks on paper to be absolutely cracking. Only 130 pounds as well. So it puts it in that really nice price point. You've got other monitors, similar sort of specs, uh, namely the Asus Tough. 
got the ASUS Tough 24 inch monitor, which um, has a little bit more adjustment on the actual frame for rotation, etc., but doesn't have a USB hub as far as I'm aware. So they kind of there are there are pros and cons of these things, and also it is considerably cheaper. The ASUS I think is about 170. Uh, having a brief discussion with Colin Hilton about that a little bit earlier, and yeah, potentially this is something of interest, especially to those of you on uh, slightly more of a budget, or you just don't want a hulking great 27 or 32 inch monitor. You just want a nice fast IPS monitor with good color reproduction at a sensible price. So hopefully that is going to fit the bill. We've also got the John's Bow Magic Fans, as you can already see on the desk here. These are the magical, mystical fans from our friends over at John's Bow, courtesy of our other friend, Ugly Bob. Uh, Ugly Bob sent these in. This is actually a pretty decent bargain, AliExpress pickup again. So uh, these are the ZF120 ARGB. They're basically kind of interlocking fans, so they've gone away from the more expensive kind of magnetic technologies these are basically push togethers but at a pretty decent price so these with a little hub which they kind of put into a bundle looking about 30 pounds for the set there are some pros and cons to them obviously they are relatively inexpensive fans but we're going to fire those up later on get the power supply down fire them up you can uh, see what they're like look at some of the results look at the rgb and you can listen to the noise profile, which I think is going to be the interesting one. And you can, yeah, and you can hear the noise of uh, fan blades destroying flesh, and or carrots, or cucumbers. We, ask, so you've got the we have got cucumbers, so we they might be able to do that. They're only little. Okay. Uh, Ugly Bob says, um, my Red Eagle one upscales brilliantly to 4K. Use it as my home main office screen because the screen quality is amazing. There Good you go. Screen. Thqueen. The Thqueen quality is amazing. <laughs> Aletta says, I like large monitors. I do as well, but I don't always have the room for them. So, yeah, we'll take a look at those sausage slicers a little bit later on also. So, let's put that to one side. Uh, what else we got? The laptop that might not get repaired. We'll talk about that shortly, actually, because that involves getting out and having a little, having a little play. Uh, other topics are Game Max Velocity. Game Max Velocity fan set. This is actually another cracking little fan set. Moving on, so if for some reason the John's Bay ones don't quite flick your boat, or you want something a little bit more, um, how can I say, more of a package, uh, these are really good. So you've got a remote control, you've got a hub, you've also got a strip light as well, and also three fans, and you can pick all that up again, around about £30 or less. So it's a really nice little kit, and also expandable, because they do sell the Velocity fans on their own for something about six to seven pounds each maybe less something they have got a trick up their sleeves 24 leds in each fan so even the most basic of addressable rgb lighting styles actually looks a lot better now something which i notice quite frequently is a lot of other or a lot of addressable rgb fans only have about eight to ten maybe twelve actual leds in them so most software is looking for more to make that kind of rainbow effect so you kind of either get reds, pinks, and yellows together, then you get some blues. You can probably see it behind me, actually, in those already. Possibly. I don't know if you can. It's the angle. But you can see that one there. It's mostly blue, mostly red, rather than being basically all of the colours at the same time, which is what people who want rainbow puke want. They want to see rainbow puke. You don't want to see shades of colours. Or maybe you do. I don't know. Maybe I'm somewhat unique in that respect. But we'll take a look at those as well. We'll fire those up. You can listen to them. Bizarrely, considering they're really, really cheap fans, they've got excellent acoustic properties. There are some downsides of them, which is why I'm going to fire them up so you can see what it's all about. We will be doing dedicated videos on pretty much all of this stuff as well. So if you're either pissed right up or going to bed or whatever, don't worry. Most of this will be covered in individual videos as well. This is kind of like an, uh, a roll-up of the week and also a look forward to what's happening next week also. So what else have we got on here? So other topics. Uh, this uh, this one's actually um, it's one of those things that I I kind of like to do, but I don't. And the reasons why I don't will be obvious, but the reasons why I do will be kind of apparent as well. So uh, Colin Colin Hilton, who's one of our regular members of our community, and actually sends us uh, lots of little gifts and watches the videos, all that kind of stuff, Patreon member, very supportive, excellent person, 
a wonderful human being. Not that anyone out there isn't, but he kind of goes the extra mile, much like, well, I'm not going to name names because that's unfair, but uh, Colin does go the extra mile for us. He really does. Um, he basically reached out to us over the weekend and said, have you got any parts that you'd be willing to sell? Because he's uh, trying to put together uh, a gaming PC bundle for one of his kind of uh, friends or neighbours, relative, what, it's just someone local. They've basically got a, uh, a sick child, which is never obviously a good thing. Um, I don't really want to say exactly what it is, but it's kind of, it's, it's not good. And it's a relatively young child, not quite in their teens yet, or tweens, I suppose you'd say. So, younger child. Um, the mother has kind of had to give up work to stay at home and look after the child. That's the kind of severity. I'm sorry to put a bummer on your night, but I wanted to say this because it, it needs saying. Uh, so, yeah, he said, basically, have you got stuff that I can buy off you? And it's like, realistically, if I can't do something to help with the channel, the kind of size we're getting to now, with the community we have, if we can't do something to help, then there's something seriously wrong with the world. So I've said, um, well, we've had various discussions, I'm not going to go into great depth of it, but basically I said that I would mention it to the community and we'll try and see out of the generosity of people's hearts if there's anybody who wants to contribute in any way, shape or form. We'll try and work out a way that we can do that. Uh, Colin is actually working with another YouTube content creator over in Florida, which is uh, Superman G, I think I'm correct in saying. And basically between the two of them, they put together PCs, one over that side of the pond, one over this side of the pond, and basically if they find a kind of a worthy cause, they kind of pull together and do what they can to try and make it happen. So obviously, we're human beings, ultimately, like, Christian people, we want to help people out where we can, etc, etc. So, yeah, that's where we're at. I only heard about this yesterday, so I've not had a chance yet to reach out to some of the people that we work with on a professional level. Um, yes, Thermal Take, I'm looking at you, MSI, uh, Iyama now, uh, Lexar, etc, etc. There's other companies, obviously, as well, but those are the ones that sprung to mind, so I'm going to do my best to try and reach out to some of those individually and say, look, we're trying to do something nice for this uh, young person. Can you see any way that you can either help us out or make a donation or just whatever it is, however big or small, every little helps. And uh, if it makes someone who's in a, a pretty bad way feel a little bit better, then I think it's definitely well worth doing it. Now, obviously, I don't know the entire story, all the ins and outs. This is very new, very fresh. I uh, only heard about it like late last night, so not even had 24 hours to kind of formulate a plan yet. We are balls rolling basically so we're kind of getting there some of the things we're kind of looking at at the moment is going to be a monitor so it's likely that this Iyama monitor or Iyama or I Yama monitor once we finish reviewing it I think that is probably going to end up going to Colin um, whether or not Iyama Iyama agreed to it or whatever it's we'll we'll sort something out either way but I just want to say that is what we're doing um yeah, just want to try and do a nice thing for uh, someone in need, which is ultimately what we should all be doing as human beings. So anyway, just wanted to say that, acknowledge that what Colin's been doing. God bless him. He's on our Discord yeah, as well. Yeah, he's on our Discord as well. So if you actually want to reach out to Colin individually yourself, so you don't want to do it through the channel, which I totally understand and totally yeah, respect. Right, yeah, I should ask first of all, Colin, if that's okay with you, but... Ugly Bob's already. Kind of tough. Into... Tough luck. You're going you're gonna to have to have it, so... We want to try and help you, probably doing it directly through Colin, being it is a thing that him and his uh, colleague across the pond are working on together. If you've got any comments or questions, I don't want you to bombard Colin with craziness. Please, please don't do that. I I don't think anybody in our community would, but yeah, if you want to reach out to him uh, or reach out to us, you're more than welcome to. Like I said, I'm going to put some feelers out on Monday, see if we can get some of the companies we've worked with to... Uh, hopefully throw together a few things for a bundle to hopefully put a smile on this young person's face which would be awesome uh, looks like a lot of you in the comments there are making suggestions and offering things up so yeah that is uh that's awesome you're all wonderful people despite what it says in the toilets i disagree i think you're all great 
So there is that. Uh, that will be we'll follow on with that story and uh, follow it up. And potentially, hopefully, well, not hopefully, because you don't want to have to do this, or you don't not have to do it. You don't want to be able, you don't want to need to do this for people. But uh, maybe it's something that we can actually improve on and do Captain as things Lee on. Always wanted to do that, Captain yeah. Meat. Captain Meat uh, was always making suggestions along those lines, and I think that hopefully now we're getting to a little bit of a bigger size channel that we can uh, influence and reach out to people and uh, hopefully make a difference. So there you go, there is that one. I can put a tick by that one. I'm so sad. The pen don't work. Bloody Mike's unboxing pen, absolutely useless. Although I've been using it for two years, so expected. Um, quick other notes. So NZXT have finally admitted defeat with the motherboard, which is, oh, I don't think I can actually reach it down here. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it did. So this motherboard bought ages ago. Um, I've held off doing a build on this purely for the reason that the Intel 13500 processor, which was in originally intended to go in there, didn't work properly. It worked, but I could never get the onboard graphics to actually work and boot, which is yeah problematic to say the least, especially if you're going to be then passing the system on to someone, selling it, whatever, etc., etc. But they've come back to us. Uh, we've had about two or three weeks of backing and forward in various BIOS updates and configuration tweaks, and they've gone back to their engineers. And it appears that it is actually an issue with the Intel chipset. That particular one, for some reason, the C0 or B0 steppings just basically don't work as intended because they came out after the motherboard was designed. The other chips are based on the C0 stepping, etc., etc. So, anyway, you get the idea. So yeah, I'm gonna finally admit defeat, put it into a build and just la la la, can't see it anymore, it's absolutely fine. So that is gonna be on, well, there'll be a video on that coming up. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. I did have various ideas on what to do. I will make a list. Uh, part of the problem actually at the moment is power supplies. <coughs> power supplies in the moment here in the UK, let me know if you're uh, abroad in another country or even just in another part of our country uh, the mighty scotland uh, the lovely wells or ireland <laughs> i was trying to think of something to say for ireland i don't know what can you say it's uh apparently it's a very beautiful place god's country apparently well then the welsh said that about wells so i don't know i'm confused anyway moving on so yeah let's know about your power supply prices what are you thinking about those at the moment i think they're absolutely dire even the most basic of basic power supplies at the moment, such as the old favourites that we used to go to all the time, such as the CIT 700 watts, uh, the Cylon from Aerocool, basically you can't get them. Nothing about uh, even really, really basic low-end power supplies, 500 watt bronzes, £40 is basically the minimum you're going to spend here in the UK at the moment. So that is, uh, yeah, it's not not great. Not great. And I think that for a lot of people is putting the whole build process on hold because you don't want to necessarily spend an absolute ton of money on your power supply, especially when other things are starting to come down in price. Obviously, RAM is almost dispensable at the moment. Uh, SSDs, M.2 drives, really, really cheap. Motherboards, kind of okay. CPUs dropping in price. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a particularly bad time for building a PC, especially if you're on a more budget graphics card, but power supplies are a problem. So throwing together those budget PCs is problematic. So yeah, let me know what you think about that. We'll have a look through the comments. Oh, <laughs> 68. Oh no, 69. Well done. Uh, I see that number so often on Hinkerboard. We do, we do. Colin Hilton. Uh, Captain Meets Adventure says do a game stream with all Super Chats, going to charity. That is a very good idea. The only trouble is with um, Super Chats or anything in a stream is because it's done through a stream, it goes through YouTube. So YouTube kind of, they don't, they don't tax it as source, which is good, unless it's from another country. In which case, if it's a country which doesn't have a tax treaty with the UK, I think they do deduct it, but saying that even when YouTube then eventually do their payout. So like today, uh, 
Bob, for example, done a two pound super chat and a ten pound super chat, and the other ones we've had in as well from Mick and also uh, from Stuart. They get taxed straight away, so. And then they've got to get taxed. Yeah, they get taxed, it's, you, you, and then it's commission really, isn't it? Yeah, YouTube take their tax their cut. commission processing fee, whatever you want to call it, which is normally about thirty percent. And then when we actually then tell the the tax man in the UK hey, we've had a payment from YouTube for the hard work that we've done this month. They say, oh, great, we'll have 30% of that. So the £10 that you've donated, £3 gets taken away by YouTube, £3 gets taken away by the government, and we get left with £4. So if you are doing it as a donation, best to it's to best to go straight to call in or via some of the payments, mean bank transfers, PayPal, etc. PayPal still take a cut but it's minuscule in terms of what YouTube cho uh, will do as a processing fee. It would be nice if YouTube would come up with some kind of system where you could do um, a dedicated kind of charity type stream so they don't take their handling fee and the DV uh, the uh, Her Majesty's Customs and Revenue don't take their slice as well. But I don't know that there is. So that is something that we kind of need to work on. Um, Maybe, yeah, we could do a give page, all those kinds of things. Uh, did Colin say something in the chat? Yeah, I'm humbled by your comments. Uh, let's, uh, let's put it on the screen. So Colin's there in the chat and said, Mike's unboxing, I am humbled by your comments and to be a part of your wonderful viewers. Uh, I don't ask or expect anything for helping others. Which is the, the brilliant thing about it. Uh, I find that a lot. It's a very weird thing for me. It was almost a culture shock. Previously, for those of you, I'm going to go slightly off the topic here, but I'm sorry, but I'll say it. Previously, before doing YouTube, uh, Kath and myself both worked for the BBC, which is a, a TV company in the United Kingdom. We worked on a drama programme. And it, it was very cutthroat. And everyone was like trying to fight for their position within the company. And uh, there's They're always... They're freelance, so they had to... It's a, yeah, it's, a, it's, a freelance, it's a freelance market, so basically kind of everyone's trying to outdo someone else so they can get a job or keep their job, etc. So it's a, it's a very weird thing. It's quite cutthroat, two -faced. a little bit bitchy, a bit two-faced. And then obviously coming in from that and then doing YouTube, thinking this is another media company, it's a very com it's completely different. It's uh, there is some levels of toxicity to YouTube and the whole kind of creation thing, but for the most part, I would say the ninety nine point nine percent, everyone is amazing, uh, super nice people, very friendly, very helpful, massively supportive, and it, it, it was um, working for the BBC was making me ill, genuinely was making me ill, mentally and physically ill. Uh, for a decade. Yeah, for over a decade. It was, I literally sold my soul. And mentally that does things to you that you shouldn't have to go through. So going from that and then coming over to YouTube and meeting so many like really genuinely lovely people who basically don't want to do anything else in their lives apart from make other people happy is just mental. It's absolutely insane. And it kind of, it still now takes me, it's like... I'm waiting, like, someone pinch me, this is, it's not real. And it feels very surreal, it really does, because the, the normal real world is not as nice as this world, which I think is why people turn to it so much. But anyway, let's move on. So that is that out the way. <laughs> Pick. Um, oh, another one, quick housekeeping one, did a, a GPU switcheroo this week. So in part of getting ready for the Intel build. Uh, I've taken out my Intel Arc A770, which was originally in my video editing machine. So the RTX 3060 Ti, which was in here, was taken out of there, put into my video editing PC. The A770 is now back in the box, ready for a build. The RX 6600 is now in the streaming PC. So we're all AMD again, which is uh, potentially lovely. Well, maybe it's not going to be, but it seems to be running well and actually doesn't appear to have dropped any frames. Uh, CPU usage is currently down to 0.0%. So basically the Radeon card is basically running the stream and 
the fans aren't moving, so that means it's under 40 degrees. So, or is it 50 degrees? I'm not sure with that card. But regardless, it's doing a fantastic job. So fingers crossed, AMD don't screw up the drivers and ruin that for me. But at the moment, yeah, we're back on an all AMD rig there, which uh, is uh, pretty cool. So that is uh, a little bit of a change round. I didn't think I was going to be getting, not rid of, but I didn't think I was be moving away from Intel as quickly as I did. I really liked working with the Intel graphics card on the Intel system. It worked very well. But the one thing which still plagues it is the uh, the high power usage and the idle wattage, which I've still never managed to get down satisfactorily. And when I did get it to go down satisfactorily, it then, if you change resolution or up your refresh rate, you basically screwed yourself. So it's unfortunate. Uh, hopefully Battle Mage is going to be better when that comes out or whether Intel will just turn around and admit defeat and say, look, we just can't compete on this playing field at the moment. But it seems that AMD is down in terms of the high-end market. NVIDIA is absent from the low-end and mid-range market. So maybe Intel do have a... Have a a dog in the fight, so to speak. But we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, there was something else. We maybe talk about that a little bit later. What time is it? We're not doing too bad for time at all. You haven't got anything out yet. I know, I haven't. That's why I'm good. That, your list. I've, gone for, I've gone through my list and we've had a chat and we've talked about the important things, which is the people that were going to be joining the stream early on, at least they know the important stuff now, and especially uh, the thing we're trying to help with, uh, with Colin. So. That is good. So let's say some quick hellos to those of you in the chat and uh, wish you all well. Pretty much have. Where are we? So, sorry, scrolling up through. Why does a mouse wheel make a different noise scrolling up than it does down? Has anyone ever noticed that or wondered it? Up? Oh no, that does the same equally as bad both ways. I've got an MSI mouse, and the mouse wheel is absolutely horrendous scrolling upwards, but mm. scrolling down is absolutely fine. Put that teddy bear ad on the list of where to talk about. Teddy bear ad? What, in the shopping list? No, it's on the top. Is it? It's pinned. Oh, I pinned it. Well done. Let's change that then. And uh, there we go. Get yourself a classic, get yourself a classic, uh, what's it called? I can't see it on mine. Come up on mine again now. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realise you could do this. There's a shopping tab in the uh, the content creator thing. Thermal takes in. Thermal takes in the house. God bless you. Right, let's do some quick hellos and uh, we'll try and get that done in the next five minutes. Willie Bob says, good evening, fellow tech unboxers. We are, aren't we? We're all of us. We're unboxers because we're all buying stuff. We're all consumers. Yeah, consumerism. Love it. See, I think I've missed out a load of chat there. That was the top one. Welly Bob, 8.15. Maybe there is. Come on. If you were in earlier than that, apologies. <laughs> Nick Barnes. Hi, Kath. Hope you enjoyed the garden. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Do you know what? Funny story. We have got to the point now where we're very friendly. Well, not very friendly, but we're more friendly now. We go to our local uh, shopping supermarket thing. Is it on the list? It's not on the list. It's very local. And there's a, we go there when they're basically about to do the yellow and what well, the the reductions basically because we're cheapskates, got to spend money on computer stuff, not food. God, should buy decent food, but we try to. Anyway, moving on. So we go in there and there's a group of people all who all turn up roughly the same sort of time, and they're all various levels of kind of. Um, I don't want to say poverty, but clearly, they maybe haven't got. They're not flush. Let's say. So they're making an effort to get there for the reduced stuff because they want the reduced stuff. And they're very cool people. So if any of them are watching, which I very much doubt because I can't imagine any of them being into technology. But anyway, if they are, uh, hi, how are you doing? And also, it's amazing. Tonight, one of the chaps... But we're in that poverty thing, if you saying that. We are in that group, yeah. So uh, one of the chaps, which I don't think I should name because I basically can't remember his name. But uh, Kath always talks to him about... Um, trying to grow stuff in the garden how the weather's been crap and our runner beans haven't grown so imagine going to your shops on a night time to do your shopping and you're in the supermarket and someone you recognize comes up to you and says oh got something for you and literally hands you over some homegrown beans I in a bag he nicked them off the front. <laughs> he probably nicked them out of the shop <laughs> but literally yeah. come up to you and said oh 
I got you these. And it just goes to show, not only is there a great community on YouTube, if you go into your local communities as well, chances are, if you open up a little bit and chat to people, you'll find that there are people like that who live locally around you as well. So you don't have to be on YouTube or social media to enjoy it. There are some genuinely decent people in the world. So I just wanted to say that as well. So if again, if you're watching, thanks for being much appreciated. We're gonna cut them up. We've got some uh, reduced diced beef and we've got some reduced potatoes, 31p for a big bag of potatoes, awesome stuff. So we're gonna have uh, mashed potatoes with diced beef and green beans. Happy days. That's the plan. It won't happen. It's not I on the list. To give him some back then, mind you. Sky Stalker's with us. How you doing, Sky Stalker? And Tina, of course. If Tina's still driving, keep your eyes on the road. That was the beginning one, I think. It might have been. Uh, Mark Barry's with us. How you doing? He's in sunny Swanage. Mookie MC. Oh, yes, please, yeah. Calf's making rude gestures, and it's, I know. <laughs> Probably straight. in the screen in the PC. <laughs> Reflecto porn in there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, uh, as far as foodies. Mookie MC, Aletta's with us. How are you doing, Aletta? Ordinary nerd. Awesome stuff. How are you doing? Had this in the background and forgot it was here until I heard the music. <laughs> uh, Lucky Man's with us. Click Tech Kev. How are you doing, Click Tech Kev? Good to see you. Uh, Stuart Cleary said that already thank you for the super chat as well also lucky man's with us good old lucky man it was lucky man's birthday this week happy birthday to you lucky man and also it was glenn's birthday as well this week so happy birthday to you also happy birthday glenn and happy birthday glenn. to oh, all of you man, let's give you some man, let's give you some confetti in the chat there you go hit him up with some confetti i think that's what is that confetti or is it some kind of rainbow i don't know what it is let's just we'll, we'll assume it's confetti happy birthday boys that sign is so condescending. I'm a horrible person. Steve Larkin's with us. It says, evening Mike, Kath, and all in the chat. How you doing, Steve? Good to see you. Uh, Kev says, how is everyone? Yeah, not too bad. Surprisingly well today. Oddly so. It actually feels unnaturally kind of healthy today. So clearly something's going to go wrong, but yeah, not doing too bad. Hopefully you're doing well as well. Shrek OC, the main man Shrek. Shrek, God bless his heart, on our Discord today. I swear he's getting trolled by people, but you can't tell. Sometimes in the tech world, you see I'm smiling already because this is actually some funny shit. Some people, most things we take... I have to laugh. Yeah. I don't know anything techie. We take things for granted because we've probably done a lot of these things numerous times and you get a little bit kind of, uh, not complacent, but you just assume that people kind of know the basics of pc building now i do have to say i should know better because i've got a youtube channel make youtube videos showing people how to do dumb shit that is basically my life and uh it's still like there's obviously people out there that have got elements of fear and doubt they they don't believe in themselves or they don't believe in their own kind of intuition most things in life if you follow your own intuition, you just l listen to that inner voice which is guiding you, normally it's going to guide you in the right direction. It's unlikely your own psyche is going to give you a bum steer. It might do, but it's unlikely. But a lot of people don't have faith in themselves, which is why YouTube channels exist, basically, because anything you want to do, how do I wire a plug? Type it in YouTube. Oh, that's how I wire a plug. Excellent. Follow it along. Then you've learned a skill. You've gained something. So it's excellent. But I still find um, in the Discord, I think pretty much most of the people in there in the um, probably the members group, the um, tech support people, the experts, the uh, VIPs, etc., and the admins, we've all kind of we've all been through the middle a little bit. So every couple of months, you see a, a whole new batch of people where it's like my PC doesn't boot. I've put everything together, uh, everything fires up, the fans all light up but I don't get a display. And then you say the usual things, what's the PC like, et cetera, et cetera. Do you want to send some pictures so we can see if there's anything obvious which you may have done? And sometimes you see some very, very bizarre stuff, like literally motherboards bolted directly to the back of the case, no pillars or nothing. 
And I guess it's like I said, it's not entirely obvious. Unless you've done it a few times or you've made the fatal mistakes yourself a few times, I guess you don't know. So although we do find it quite funny and humorous when people do some just basically really stupid things, we all got to learn from someone. And hopefully some of you out there in uh, the internet world out there, hopefully you learn some things from us. Because it's actually very nice to be able to be in a position where I've done things and I've messed things up so much. that I've learned from it, so I can hopefully pass on that to you guys. Which is what the, uh, the aim of this channel is, really. That's what it all started from. Anyway, moving on. So, Ugly Bob, we said a letter. We've said Colin Hilton. God bless you, sir. He's in the chat as well. Uh, who else we got? Shrek. Actually, yeah. Let's just say as well, big shout out to everybody on the Discord who's been um, using their time, helping people out. And just, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I get on there, and I think probably some of you do as well, you just get into these conversations or you see a post come up and it's the same thing again. No post. Do I need to flash this? Can't get my USB to work, etc. And you read it. You, and you kind of just... You can hear an audible dunk as your heart is just sink into your boots where you know this is just like, right, here we go. But some days you get that thing where it's like, right, I know where this is going. Let's do this. And I guess you guys are doing that as well. So thank you all from myself and Kath. Thank you all so much for what you do in the uh, in the Discord. It is much as appreciated. Right, who else have I got to? Let's fire through these. I keep on saying that, but I don't. Mick Woods is with us. How you doing? Arale is with us. Bless you, Arale. Can I just interrupt? Rick H, JB27. How you doing, JB? Yep. Yeah. I have a question. Hmm. Hi. Which one should I buy? Thermal Wright Assassin King... King. 120 SE for 22 euros or Burst Assassin for 28 euros. I have a Ryzen 5 5600. I don't think there's actually any real difference between them in terms of actual performance. I've used both of them. The Burst Assassin... Is the Burst Assassin the non-RGB one? I think it might be. Realistically, pretty much all of the Assassin range, which are the same like 120mm design with the 4 or the 5 heat pipes, the names change, but the product is basically the same. So if one's cheaper than the other, go for the cheaper one. If one of them looks nicer than the other, just go for the one you like the look of, if it's not outrageously more expensive. I think we've reviewed both of them. So, dude, I'm trying to think the Burst Assassin. Was that the flat one? I don't think it is. There won't be much between them, realistically. Uh, Click to Kev says, thought of you guys as we went past Bristol slowly on the M5 car park. The M5 car park is one of the world's only free car parks. Do you know that? You pay per mile in fuel, but that's quite expensive, to be fair. Uh, Mark Berry, JB27. Mike, don't know geography. No, I don't, sadly. Not my thing. Click to Kev, Mike's being organised. Wow, wow, wow. I do try. It doesn't always work. Alrighty. Ooh, Mike has words on paper. I don't know. Actual words on paper and some of them are actually getting ticked. But the worst thing is he printed it. I did print the, the I printed out the first one and <laughs> copied and pasted it and look at that. How the bloody hell am I supposed to read that? So sorry a uh, not a letter. Sorry, uh, Greta. I always mix these two up. Sorry, Greta, I wasted both ink and paper. I'm gonna burn in hell. Hopefully it won't be too well. I will staple a receipt to the back of it, yeah. so I will reuse it. Uh, did, Move Game Seeds, did the list start out with make a list? No, but those lists are often the best. Thermal Takes heading back up past us tomorrow. What's that? Thermal Takes heading back up past us tomorrow. Ah, right. Feel free to swing by, say hello. As long as it's not around ass o'clock. If it's around four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's around four o'clock, that's fine. No, if it's before oh. four o'clock. Yeah. Pop in and see you. Yeah, it's true. Wait, what's after four o'clock? You won't be here. You'll be. Oh yeah, it's Sunday tomorrow. I forgot. Oh, work. Oh, did you hear that visible dunk again? That was my heart sinking. See you and get some polish for. Yeah. His wheels. Alessa says currently twenty-eight degrees Celsius with clouds and thunder here. Wow, horrendous stuff. Um, God, I've gone through way too many here. I'm going to say. Bandy is with us. How you doing, Bandy? David Underhill, how you doing? Uh, da, da, da. Ivory Wolfman, good afternoon to you. 
Matthew Day's with us. Uh, not looking for an older platform then. I have a spare AM3. You need to build some of these platforms, seriously. We're going to have to come around there and smack you about or something. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to say that anymore. I know, we're not allowed to do that. Okay. Uh, G-Zone says, hi Mike and everyone. Glenn says, Game Max Trooper case here. I can donate if needed. You never know. Have a, we'll have a discussion with... We might actually see if we can get together, I don't know, have some sort of chat room in the Discord where we can maybe one night or one day or something all get together and have a chat about it, possibly. We'll see. That might be a nice idea. Just to say hello to everyone as well. Uh, Matthew Day says, not the first case of 600 series 13th gen incompatibility. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> I think I'm pretty much up to date. Uh, David Underhill says 1.5 degree here at present. Wow. That's horrendous. Drew says nearly at 100k subs. Well done. Yes, nearly at 100k subs. We're getting there. And actually, let's move on to... And oh, thanks for adding the word both. I get... Yeah, both. Always ignored in it. Calf gets ignored. It's her own fault, to be fair. She won't appear on camera. So it's like anything. If you, if you had, like... Um, the two Ronnies, and you only had one Ronnie on screen, you'd be called the Ronnie. You wouldn't be called the two Ronnies because the other Ronnie would be nowhere to be seen. I digress. Let's get our mystery package out. Let's get this out of the way. So this is the mystery package, which as you can tell has been opened numerous times. It did have DHL tape all around it. I better check actually. It hasn't got my dresser. There's some of the uh, DHL tape on there. So it was actually opened by them. Now it did say at the bottom here, uh, open here. So it does say on there, as you can probably see, uh, this side up. And there, it did say open here. And the papers I took off so you couldn't see what it was. Yeah, calf took. So um, I don't know where I should do it. Should I do this with the overhead? Or should I do it on that camera? I don't know. Let's see if the overhead actually works. I haven't even tried that yet. Maybe your face is what oh, needs I've... to be seen more. My face? I don't even want to see my face. No, I don't see my face. Is your head actually working? There we go. Uh, let's clear that off of there. So that works out quite well. You can see that. Okay, so, so this. Take a UK. Oh no. <laughs> so let's have a look. And thermal take UK. Say which camera. Yeah, thermal take UK. You should actually say which camera it should be on. <laughs> or the. Follow cam. I haven't got the follow cam on currently. Gary, st Gary says, come on, Calf, you should be on camera. Thermal Take UK says top. Okay, all right, let's do it. So uh, I'm going to move this out of the way. Oh, shit. Let me move things out of the way. So let's uh, open this up. So this appears to be um, a Thermal Take Tough Power series. Is there anything important on there which is not to be seen? Oh, what hell? So this looks like a Tough Power GF1750 box, which is probably a little bit old by now. Do they actually even, do they still make the GF1 now? I don't think they should. Mind your tea. I am, I'm looking at my cup of tea, which is over here, sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna slurp my tea. Could it be one of Bob's farts? So thermal take. UK say the GF1 is end of line. I thought it was. <laughs> Glenn with his 420 blazing says top, middle, or bottom. Good old, well, I shouldn't say good old. That's a Freudian slip, really, because he's not good. He's old, though. Uh, Michael Barrymore had a program called. What was that? Strike It Lucky. And there's three levels, top, middle, or bottom. He's definitely a bottom. Yes. <laughs> let's, 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 let's move on from there. As soon as the uh, RGB light is stopped, and you'll excuse me my blushing. So let's have a look and see what's going on here. So we've got some bubble wrap, which is uh, kind of nice. Thanks, Thermal Take UK, for sending in the bubble wrap. And thanks, Glenn. There we go, for all you fetishes out there. Um, we've got some more things, and ah, now this is getting interesting. So we have a box inside of a box. So let's move this out of here. Uh, 
Is there anything else in here? Nope, it's still a tough power box. Okay, so we, we won't be needing that for a little while. So, let's have a look what we got here. So this is, um, it feels quite heavy. Um, there's a number three on the here. Um, I'm not sure what that is for. There's a number three. Is that relevant or anything? Does I need number three? I don't know. Is there a number on there? There's a number three on there as well. Oh, we should be playing music and when it stops it should be passed between me and you. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to be on the camera. I could do it all. So for those of you that can see close enough, um, well, it basically says what it is on there. So this is a uh, thermal take and it says best media award. Mike's unboxing. So it feels very heavy and let's uh let's see what this is all about and Ta -da. Ooh. some more foam in there to prevent damage in transit but what we have here ladies and gentlemen in this attractive box with no money in it uh, this is from thermal take global Sorry, reflective porn. Oh, you can see the ceiling. See the ceiling, man. Um, and it does say on there, Thermal Take Best Media Award, awarded to Mike's Unboxing, signed by Kenny, who is the, I can't think what his surname is actually. Is it Kenny Lynn? And uh, yeah, signed by Kenny Lynn, the chairman and CEO of Thermal Take Technology Co. Limited from May 2023. Now, for those of you that followed the um, the CES coverage in May, these, I believe, were awarded from Thermal Take to various members of the, of the press and the media. And they were done on stage. So I don't know if I'd have been there. I'd have been up on the stage with those other lucky people. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of mad. Turn it back to you now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I honestly, I don't know what to say. I really don't. It's thank you very much for the super chat, Arali, and thank you Thermal Take for uh, for this award. Speech, 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 speech. <laughs> Let's go back to the main camera. So there you go. You can uh, you can. This thing's actually really heavy. <laughs> So it's uh, it's basically solid glass or crystal. I'm, I guess it's glass. I'm not too sure. I'm getting sweaty hands on it. And there you go. Hopefully you can. Uh, you can't really see it with the light. You can see it. There's the media shot. <laughs> it looks really see-through, but in real life, it looks quite yellow. Yeah. So there's uh, like a yellow base or golden. or golden base, which then reflects up through. And you got this. It's literally. That's super heavy. Ugly Bob, 10 Frank Super Chat, says that is the poshest bottle of aftershave I've ever seen. <laughs> it is. Uh, Thermal Tech UK say it's crystal. So it's actually a crystal award. So I am. Uh, this is actually the first award that we've. I think this is the first award we've had as a channel, isn't it? As a channel, yeah. I won the egg and spoon race once. There you go. <laughs> Kath once won the egg and spoon race. <laughs> That was her previous claim to fame, but now she is part of the award-winning Mike's been, Unboxing I must have been YouTube channel. Pretty pleased with that. And it's come at a really good time because we're edging closer and closer to the uh, the 100k mark. So hopefully oh that God, will... It is really heavy. Uh, hopefully we will be able to have our 100,000 <laughs> subscriber uh, plaque. To go next with that, so we can uh, we can display them both together somewhere. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Lucky man says, "Has it got RGB?" Not currently. It is really heavy. You don't understand how well if you've ever used like a, a crystal decanter. Imagine one of those, but or maybe two of them. This actually, you could use this as a weight. I bet you'd kill me with it. But, Kath did say that, yeah. She's. I bet you'll kill me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you ever see this on display, 
behind me somewhere and it's missing maybe one of the corners <laughs> and calf's really quiet, you know what's happened. How many fan headers does it have? Uh, currently has no fan headers, but we may have to, uh, to remedy that. Does Thermal Take make a case for that awesome award? <laughs> they do. So genuinely, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's mental. Actually having an award or getting some form of recognition for the channel is, uh, is yeah, very, very cool indeed. So thank you very much, Thermal Take. Much appreciated. And actually, it is now the perfect thing. Oh, God, I ran into stuff. Um, I can actually put it into the Series 500 because it's always been bothering me that I've got a big space here. So, there we go. We've got our board in the case. It's just doubled the weight of the case. I'm going to have to reinforce this shelf soon. It's got a on there as well. Look at that, that's cool. I'm impressed with that. So thank you very much. Much appreciated. Well, thanks to everyone's congrats. Yeah, thank you for the uh, congratulations. <laughs> oh, you flash bugger. <laughs> that's brilliant. That is. Yeah, we'll have to... Uh... Matthew Day's got an award. I'll have to post a pic of my award on the Discord. You should do. Uh, Nick Barnes, excellent reward and very well deserved calf. Camera skills and mic too. Calf actually sniggered then. I don't know if you heard that. So it's RGB illuminated. You can't really see it that we well in there. We should get another one soon, shouldn't we? In six, sub, six thousand subs. How's that look? Come on, catch up, I can't see now. I will be messing around with that, moving it around. I don't know, I might have to, I'm gonna have to find somewhere better for it. It's not going in the toilet. Our bathroom's awful. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Because it's very cool and I'm very, very pleased. So yes, I can actually say now, officially, the award-winning Mike's Unboxing YouTube channel. Happy days. <laughs> Maybe the Superman mug. Captain Me's Adventures, very uh, complimentary, as always. Uh, God, how has this channel won anything? It could not in a three-legged race if it had six legs. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Excellent. James has put it back in the case. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dave Andrew says, do we all get participation awards? Um, it is the 90, uh, sorry, it is the the twenty twenties. So that sort of thing is normally seen, but unfortunately not. Uh, David Aikens with us says uh, the award for the best yellow sticker finder in the southwest. That might be me. Or it could be um, Matthew Day as well. He's very good. Matthew Day's been doing it a lot longer. We've learned everything we need to from him. <laughs> uh, Thermal Tape UK. Oh, they said no. I'm not too sure. George, look at Dan's new award. Mookie MC says, save the box for when it will take demands you return it. Yeah. Whenever... Oh. Sorry, that's the ice dispenser and our son. Hello, George. Dan's award. I've seen it already. It's been how heavy it is. Oh, that is quite heavy. I don't know how much CEX is going to give me for that, but... <laughs> Hi, George. I'm only kidding. George, everyone's saying hello to you. They're saying hello. Yeah. Ugly Bob says the best Arnold Voslo lookalike. <coughs> Get in there. Save the box in case you have to. Argue. It is a lethal oh. weapon. Seriously, it's like. It's proper. That's got to be about two kilos. Easy. He's going to be moaning his arm muscles hurt tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be like, oh. Yeah, I'll go to work tomorrow and be like, Oh, my arm hurts so much. Like, oh, what's the matter? Like, oh, I'm lifting the award. <laughs> <laughs> right. And on that bombshell, it only seems fitting now that we actually look at something as well. That is from Thermal Take, believe it or not. Actually, what do you want to do first? Should we do the monitor first or do you want to do the uh, 420 mil cooler? Let me know what your thoughts are and uh, we will, uh, we'll do whichever. 
Midwood says, well done, Mike's unboxing, and well done, Thermal Take. Don't you just love this channel? Bless you. Thank you very much. That is appreciated. O'Reilly says, monitor. Ugly Bob says, I think you should do the Thermal Take thing next. Yeah, Adam probably wants to get to bed, so let's, uh, let's have a look at this. I'm actually intrigued, because this cooler has been sat here in the box, and I've been waiting to do something with it. But unfortunately, it's had other boxes piled on top of it. So we haven't quite got round right to doing it yet. Now, this is something actually, I don't know where to start with this. I think you should probably start with the fact that this is cheaper than you think it's going to be. Thermal takes says, first UK media to show the new THV2. Ah, there we go. So this is um, an exclusive at present. Happy days. Now we're not going to be testing it, its thermal capabilities because it's a 420 mil rad and you need some serious space to do that. And unfortunately the serious space that I need to do it is actually the Series 500. So when we do the testing this this week, I'm actually going to be doing it in the front of the Series 500. Now I don't often like front mounted radiators, but when you've got something this big, then you're kind of slightly limited. This is more for your more, um, aggressive system more hardcore system so you do need a bit of room for it but this is the th420 version 2 argb sync we've actually done the um i think we did the th360 argb not that long ago although it seems like it's ages ago but it was a very good cooler actually very good pricing this actually I have some guesses in the um in the chat how much do you think this is oh you're guessing Ugly Bob says 100 quid. You're not that far off. Uh, O'Reilly say, says 180. He also said 80. <laughs> Ladios says that thing is bigger than my PC. Uh, Ivory Wolfman says, I remember when Thermal Take were a brand you'd never recommend to a friend. I always liked them though, but now you can recommend it to a friend. <laughs> yeah. Thermal you take can. So there's some pretty good guesses actually in there. Uh, Ugly Bob says, I'll give you 100 quid cash and I'll donate it to Colin Hilton. You never know. I've got a feeling this has got to go back. I should check. Yeah. Uh, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Derek, hey, Flame. if my girlfriend asks, <laughs> my girlfriend asks that cooler is only six inches long. <laughs> right, the price for this at the moment, actually, because of all of you guessing, I've completely lost track of how much it was. I'm pretty sure at the moment on scan.co.uk, please feel free to check out. Actually, please do check out because it saves me doing it because I don't feel I can actually reach my keyboard. 129.99 is the retail price for this as it stands at the moment. Potentially... It might be slightly more, might be slightly less, but I'm pretty sure it's 129. Uh, and if you buy it in Australia, David Underhill saying there, the uh, this one is 239 Aussie dollars, so that works out to 135 pounds. Yeah, 129.99. 129.99. So that is cheap for a 420 mil cooler. 130 quid, considering this is like the improved version. So it comes now with the CT140 fans. Now, if you've seen any of our videos before, you'll know the CT140 fans are awesome. I've got CT140 fans there. There's three in the front there. There's some up there. I really like them. They're great value for money. And they are kind of knocking on the door of basically Noctua fans. And in some cases, actually better. Do you want to move your tea again? Do you want to move my tea? Yeah, I should. Oh, that's quite one. Scan UK right now, 119 Wow. Awesome stuff. So yeah, for a 420 mil AIA, that is nuts pricing, it really is. Let's head over onto the uh, overhead cam. And I better clear the messages off because that is gonna get in the way. Is that, there we go. So let's see what it's all about. So TH420 V2, ARGB sync, AIO liquid cooler, three fans, cover based design, 34.7 dBA, I'm not entirely sure how they work this out. I'm actually, being that Adam is in the chat at the moment, Thermal Take UK, 
is it 34.7 dB over the ambient dBA, or is that an actual reading in like a, a soundproof room? I've never quite worked out what the deal is with that. Because I can't imagine, because this room, literally with just the PCs on and no one in the room, is like 40 dB. Unless my measuring equipment is wrong, which it probably is. Let's uh, get this bad boy open. I'm not very good at this unboxing, Lark. There we go. Soundproof chamber. Ah, right. So in, in a soundproof chamber, it is basically 34.7 dBA. So what do we get in here? We get a parts list, the usual kind of stuff. So this supports CPUs from AMD. From AMD, you're looking at AM5, AM4, AM3+, AM3. AM2+, plus, AM2, FM1, FM2, FM2+. Plus. And it's a signproof chamber at max speed. Wow. So, quite a hefty kit. Now, you get the three fans, obviously. So, three CT140 fans. These are actually very cool because they've done the clever thing. Well, not a clever thing, but the sensible thing. So... They've actually put minimal supports on the back and actually put them opposing the blades so that air can actually go through them easier. I've had some recent fans which have got multiple different layers and it just increases turbulence and doesn't sound as good. And also this lets a little bit more air th through as well. They've also got pretty short connections on there so you can daisy chain them to save on wiring which is always beneficial. And there's pass-throughs as well so you've got your PWM, male and female. And also the dress ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course, because everybody out there with FM1 system is just desperate to get a 420 mil rad. <laughs> so you get three of those fans. Those individually retail, I think, about £15 a piece. Maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more. Prices do fluctuate. I could be wrong on that. But they are... They're decent fans, let's be fair. I'm really fussy about fans, and the CT140s are the ones that I use on a, basically on a daily basis. Uh, accessories kit there, so you get extensions, all the usual stuff. They've also included these very cool little things from Thermal Take. This is such a stupid but sensible idea. So you've got these little TT clips because these things, these address, these rest of RGB clips, they always fall apart. So you can basically just pop the two ends in and it holds them in place. It's absolutely genius, but so simple and easy to implement. It just, oh, I hate it, especially when you see any of these connectors and they basically, they're uncapped like that and they touch something on your motherboard and it's basically game over. Then we'll take, <clears throat> then we'll take uh, where am I? The pump is our new design and the cold plate has a 0.4 mil micro fins that evenly distribute the coolant across the cold plate. Okay, Dave. I'm interested to see what the pump is like. Now, to be fair, thermal take stuff is, I would say, above average. But I will say that my thermal take, what is it, the Tough Liquid 360, for some reason, in my particular build, there is a little bit of resonance that comes through from the pump. Now, it isn't unique. Uh, two thermal take in any regard, so it is more of a chassis thing, or potentially the way the motherboard is connected. I'm not sure what. Um, unfortunately, it's a thermal take case as well, so kind of it's, the fault lies there somewhere, but it could be to do with the motherboard as well, because I've not put a different motherboard in there as of yet. But I did notice there is definitely a very slight whine to the pump on my um, Tough Liquid 360, so it'd be interesting to see how they handle that with this newer design because pump noise is a thing most people never notice it but i've got a really weird hearing thing where very very small noises which most people would never hear actually bug the shit out of me sorry to say it crudely but it's absolutely true and sometimes those noises like our kitchen is about 12 to 20 foot in that direction but yet i can hear the refrigerator pump and it annoys me. Get up and flick that one. Um, like half, That's how I won that award. Flick the freaking switch. 
because it's just like driving me absolutely nuts. Right, so. James said mosquitoes must drive you nuts. Oh yeah, we don't, luckily we don't. We get flies, but not many mosquitoes. All right, the pump head itself, the uh, the pipes, they move around actually quite well. They feel almost like there's bearings in there. It feels like. Um, I think, I'm trying to think what it is. There's like a gravity bearing, whereas when you move it, it's got resistance and the resistance changes. So those are, well, they appear to be very nice. The cables themselves or the, the tubes, anti-kink technology. So even if you're an absolute lunatic and do stupid things like that, you don't want to bend or fold. I'm not too sure if these are uh, just normal rubber, whether they've got PTFE linings in them as well. Maybe if Adam can say. Uh, Thermaltake UK resonance is from the pump speed ran way too fast. Allow the pump speed down from the right. I to be fair, I generally always have my pump set to at least eighty percent, so that could likely be it. So maybe that, yeah. User error. That's what we always say to my mum. <laughs> yeah. Connections on here, so as you'd expect, because this is a Thermaltake product, it's got addressable RGB, standard five volt three pin addressable RGB and also a pass through and the pump. I'm actually really pleased to see. I'm not sure whether this is accidental or what, but it actually seems to have a genuine four pin PWM header. Now, if you've been into water cooling for any length of time, you'll know that pretty much never, yeah, never do you get a four pin PWM header on the pump for your water block. They're pretty much always 12 volt and just on a, um, a three pin header, voltage control. So this actually has PWM. That surprises me. That is rare. Uh, when it comes to the pump head itself, so nice flat plate, flat, nice cold flat plate there. And that looks like it's finished very nicely, very smooth, not mirror finish, which isn't always the best way anyway. Yeah, that looks like it's done quite nicely. An absolute metric ton of screws holding it in place as well. So you can have even consistency across it. Quite often you find with these, if there's only maybe four or maybe six screws holding the base plate on, even if they're just slightly different torques on there, they have a little tendency to warp slightly. So that's pretty good. Uh, is it wired to be four pin or are they just using the plastic connect? No, it is. Yeah, it's fully wired four pin. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's uh, overhead. Can you see that? That is a absolute fully wired four pin PWM. That's cool. Uh, cold plating, seen that already. Something which is actually quite good on this, which a lot of manufacturers are doing now, but they seem to have done it quite well, is the rotating pump head as well. So depending how you install it, so whether you install it kind of uh, up that way, that way, that way, which way ever you, you want to do. If you've got an EVJ motherboard, you might want to mount it like that. Yeah, various different ways, but you just, you can rotate the logo in the middle. So yeah, happy days. That works well. And let's have a look at the actual radiator itself. Oh, cheers. Thank you. See you later, Adam. I'll message you when you get back. He's actually away, but he dropped into the chat just to say hello and to wish us well. When he's on holiday, bless his heart. Oh, actually, and I'll be tapping you up as well for some bits for Colin Hilton for our charity bit, which we talked about at the start of the stream if you haven't seen already. I'll talk to you about it anyway. So, big old radiator, as you can see, and uh, it looks to be absolutely pristine. There's no dings in it, which is often a problem for radiators. When they come through, they get little dings in them in manufacturing. It isn't the end of the world, to be honest with you, but it's kind of nice that if it looks like it's been looked after, it should uh, last you a bit of time. Let's see what the depth is like on that. I'm guessing it's gonna be 25 mil or 20 mil. It's not, yeah. <laughs> so depth of the radiator, looking at uh, about 25 mil, just slightly over 25 mil. And it looks like they've used wider fins on there as well. So quite often with radiators, you get this outer side section, but then the fins actually inside are lower down. 
Now that works in two ways. It's good because if you accidentally put the screws in too far, you don't mangle up any of the fins, but also it reduces your thermal capacity. So making the fins as big or as deep as physically possible actually does help with cooling and also can prevent uh, air leakage and escape because the air is gonna go straight in and rather than escaping to the side. So it's very good and it looks like there is, and it hasn't got a cover over it, so I, I like this. There is what appears to be a fill port there, which they always say don't use because you shouldn't really need to, but there is actually a fill port there at the top, which realistically is where you want it to be. So in most situations, because it's a 420, it's fucking huge. So you can have this probably at the front of your case. Now clearly, you're not gonna have it like that because your pipe's never gonna reach to your CPU. So you are gonna be pipes up. Despite what Gamers Nexus and others say, it's fine. It will be slightly noisier because obviously the air bubbles, if any, are gonna be in the top there. Your CPU block is gonna be kind of over here, or kind of over here somewhere, however you figure it out. So your pump's always gonna be lower. So you're not gonna to be too worried about air getting trapped in there because it's unlikely to fight against the downward flow of the air in there, or the water in there rather. So it, it shouldn't be a problem. But if it is ever a problem, you've got your drain plug there. So you could just tilt your PC over to the side, which then makes this the highest point, loosen it off, put in some more fluid. You're good to go, put on the rubber plug. They haven't put a void if remove sticker on there. I'm not sure whether they will do. This appears to be a regular retail release, so I can't see they would do. But yeah, I'm actually genuinely looking forward to trying this. I've never tried a 420 mil radiator, so it's gonna be actually a hard one because how do I compare it with other 420 radiators that I haven't used? So. Sure. <laughs> it's almost big enough to be well i've seen as some of you know i work in a car shop as well and i've actually seen car heater matrixes smaller than this so the sort of thing that you put or have in your car which fires hot air into you so on a frosty day you turn the heat on in your car basically there's a fan behind something this sort of size or smaller probably about half the size and it just forces air through there from the engine Heat transfers, blah, blah, blah. You get the general idea. So this actually does, this looks closer to the size of a normal radiator than it does a heater matrix, which is David, what they use. Know, it's got to go back, hasn't it? I believe this has got to go back to a thermal take. I will check in with Adam. Uh, Dave Hunter says, use the 420mm rad as a starting base for the for a humongous build and then raffle it to Colin Hilton, uh, for Colin Hilton. I'll let you read that. It's been a long day and my reading is uh, getting worse. It's that list. It's the list has screwed me over. I blame Kath. I told you not to do this. So there it is. The uh, the worldwide... No, it's not worldwide. The uh, the first UK unboxing and first look at the Thermaltake TH420 V2 ARGB sync. On the award-winning Mike's Unboxing channel. <laughs> I don't know why, but it sort of loses some of its thing, I think, if I say that straight after getting an award from Thermal Take. But I think you lot out there know that we're not sellouts and we wouldn't just say things just so we can get a bloody award. Christ. If I thought that was the case, we'd be on a lot more subs by now, I think. Right, uh, yeah, loads of fitting kits there. For those of you that are wondering, this is using a very similar setup to the Corsair mechanism. So if you're on Intel sockets, the thing which clips around, screws through. If you're on the AMD sockets, it's gonna be just the usual like ones where it's a, like a hook fit. So you just put it over the original mounting brackets for AM4, AM5, AM3, etc., and just tighten up the two thumb screws. I actually really like that, especially if you're maybe testing out thermal compounds. Oh, caught myself in. Uh, if you're testing out thermal compounds, that sort of stuff, it's actually really easy to get to because you don't have to faff around too much with screwdrivers and mounting brackets and worrying about everything falling out. It's just undo the two screws, loosen it off, pop it off, change your pace, put it back in. Happy days. David Underhill says, UK way behind has been available here since June. That's it. And our wolf one said, put in a put 420 in a case with a mini ITS. <laughs> and a 4090. That makes a lot of sense. 
Uh, ordinary dude, they should have called it the THC 420 lol. That might be too much of a USA joke. No, it works over here. Yeah, it would it would make it would make sense. I I I almost said it when I started talking about it. Yeah, TH420. It does sound a little bit too marijuana-ish, doesn't it? Uh, specifications on the back. Don't think there's anything here I really need to go over. Um, I was looking for RPM actually for the pump. Pump speed, uh, PWM. Oh, it does say on there. Yeah, PWM, 1500 to 3300 RPM. So I'm actually quite interested to see what the new pump technology is like. Because 1500 RPM for a pump is actually quite low, I think. A lot of them go a lot higher than that. Stuart and Mookie have got questions. Okay, let's, uh, let's do that. Stuart has a question. Uh, got distracted by someone in the house. Has the pump head got RGB? Yes, it definitely has, yes. There will be a full review on this coming up this week. I will be doing it probably Monday or Tuesday. So obviously being the uh, the sellout that we are, Patreons, we'll get it a little bit earlier because Patreons, but... Uh, and members although to be honest with you i shouldn't say this but whatever if you know how to look for unlisted videos instant youtube member just saying no, not a member oh yeah patron. instant patreon so if member. for some reason you don't want to pay for patreon which i think we've gonna i think we've got a new tier which is going to be like a pound so it kind of makes sense to be a patreon you get the videos almost like a couple of days after they're physically made so you Sometimes do get really early access so for some of the deals you will get it i get it some people don't want to do patreon it does feel a little bit like a sellout thing but ultimately we are trying to make money to keep going and maybe one day to stop having to buy food with yellow stickers on who knows <laughs> things might start looking up anyway there you go that is the thermal take th420 Again, if you know if you know how to look for unlisted videos, please uh, feel free to do so. Unlisted videos you can watch and feel free to comment on if you want to and say, hey Mike, I found your unlisted videos. I don't think views count from unlisted videos. I'm not too sure. Maybe they do. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. I'm actually Maybe you should do a video oh, on how to find unlisted videos. How to find unlisted videos on YouTube, including my own, to circumvent me getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like uh, someone like Epic Games showing you how to pirate games. Did you hear me say James is off? Yes. Cheers, James. Bye and welcome. Blurry eye. Stop blurring out, I've got something there now. Right, we're all good. Okie dokie, uh, what next? God, bloody hell. 25 degrees C in here currently, 60% humidity. It's warming up, let's say. It's because you've got that crystal right near it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'll look through the comments, see if there's anything else I need to. <laughs> Ordinary dude, THC420, keeping your PC cooler than your bowl. Good one. Our Wolfman Ultra has the screen on the pump instead of just LED. Yes, there is uh, various versions. Pretty much all of the Thermal Take range, they have kind of um, a bit like cars, I guess. Like you have your base model, you have your luxury model, and then you have your kind of like your Ultra model. And Thermal Take do the same thing with pretty much all of their stuff. So with like the Tough Liquid, there's the Tough Liquid ARGB, then there is the Tough Liquid something or other else and then there's the ultra which has got like all the screens on and stuff so if there's something you want to see um yeah you can spend a bit more and get a bit more ugly bob says that's very warm even your award is sweating it is crystal oh, it's monkey finest crystal yeah mike don't mistake your award for a beer and stab yourself in the eye <laughs> Uh, right, let's have a look at this monitor. <coughs> so this has been sent in to us by I, I Yama. <laughs> God, you need the hat and glasses on for it. I'm not doing it. It's hot enough as it is, right? Putting a bloody hat on. And the beard. And the, Just beard, the beard. then. I've got a beard. You're over there. Uh, <laughs> so this is the G Master Red Eagle, uh, the G2470HSU. 
I love the way they're naming these models. That's, that's going to take up most of the YouTube characters on its own. So adaptive sync, you've got free sync premium on this one. You've also got 165 hertz uh, refresh rate, 0.8 MPRT, which MPRT is kind of like a pulsing technology, which kind of tricks the monitor or your eye to perceiving it being less laggy than it is. It's like a strobe effect type thing. So don't always take the specs on a monitor box as being gospel. Ideally, you want to get your own kind of uh, latency analyzing tool. Funny enough, um, Andy from Tech Team GB actually does one called the OSRTT, which is the Open Source uh, Response Time Tester, I think it's called. Uh, so you can actually get one of those, strap it onto your monitor and actually get the real SP on what your monitor is doing. But I guess you can kind of take them somewhat at their word they have tested these things they wouldn't be allowed to outright lie but always worth having a second opinion anyway full hd 1080p um fast ips so it isn't ips screen so you're going to get that really nice richness that you get with ips monitors funny actually going recently from ips uh, sorry from uh va panels to ips i'm actually struggling to get used to it the colors are looking so much more rich I thought it was my uh, new monitor over there, which has got something really still quirky going on with the reds. But I'm noticing now this one over here, which is a, brand, a different brand altogether, that is seeming like the reds are really vivid. I look over at Calf's monitor, which is a VA panel, and it, it does look quite washed out. I'm not sure if I prefer the washed out look, but Luke. Luke Something I did find actually watching, uh, I was watching Blade 2 last night, and the first time I've watched it actually on an IPS high quality panel, and it looked freaking amazing. The colors, especially in darker stuff, so if you like things like Blade, uh, The Matrix, anything which has a, a darker tone to it but relies on other lighting, like fluorescent tube lighting, street lighting, that sort of thing, IPS is going to look great. Now, you do get a better contrast with VA panels because of the way they are. So the, the contrast ratios are generally better, but IPS gives you much more of a pop. So it's kind of, it looks sharper and it pops more, but you lose some of the contrast. So it's kind of like a trade-off. VA panels are traditionally cheaper to produce and arguably faster, although IPS now seems to have caught up quite well, especially when now you can pick up a 1080p IPS fast monitor for basically what you were paying for a 24 inch VA, maybe this time last year or the year before, possibly not the year before because things were crazy then. But anyway, you get a general idea. It's got built in speakers, it's also got a USB hub built in. So, if that is important to you, and actually, sometimes that is a difference for some people on picking up a monitor has it got speakers, has it got a USB hub? Because some people their PC is a bit further away, so they've got no way of actually accessing the USB hub. So, having them built in is cool. And having a backup set of speakers and a monitor is always handy to have for troubleshooting. I don't know. Whatever it is you're doing, if you're just plugging it into a PC for testing purposes, like this is going to be a great monitor for that. If you're not going to use it as your main monitor, you might want to use it just as a secondary monitor. Who knows? Anyway, let's have a look and see what it's like. I'm not too sure how I'm going to fire this up because I don't think I've got enough extra ports on my, uh, on my graphics card to enable another display. Now hopefully this is going to be DisplayPort and HDMI. I haven't even checked that, to be honest with you. If it's DisplayPort, I'll plug in another DisplayPort and we'll have a, a triple-headed display, which will be the first time I've actually done that on that monitor. I don't even know if it supports it. And I can't plug it into the onboard graphics on the uh, Ryzen because I've disabled them. Because that was obviously a stupid thing to do, wasn't it? Right. Oh, the tags are in on the box. Come on. Uh, Viali100 says, went from TN to IPS, would never go back. Yeah, oh God, yeah, TN monitors are not great, are they? Right, things are dropping um, badly. Okie dokie. Okay, right. Pretty much everything's fallen on the floor, so that's kind of helpful. I blame Yama because they put too much stuff in here, so 
Y llama. Ahí, llama. <laughs> so actually, they include a, uh, a display port cable. That's rare. You also get a power cable, which is the right for this region. That's also rare. Uh, you get an HDMI cable. Not so rare, but happy to see that. And you get a user manual, your power efficiency rating. This is an E rating. How did we get to the point where monitors are E rating when we switched over to flat panel technology to save energy? Like, would older CRT monitors be somewhere down here, like Z? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. There's bound to be some brainy boffins out there that know the answer to that question, but I sure as hell don't. Uh, you've also got a USB Type A to Type B cable, so that is for your uh, USB hub. Looks like it's just USB 2.0. It's not color coded blue, so I'm assuming at the moment it is going to be that. Let's have a look at the uh, display stands. So this all looks very familiar. So that's been opened already. I didn't open it. Unless someone else has had this for review. I don't know. I don't think so. So. I would imagine someone else has had this review because there appears to be a screw missing. Excuse me, I've got a screw loose. No, there it is. It is in there. So this should be uh, somewhat idiot proof. If not, I will look on the internet to see how this goes together. Ah, there we go. Stand Assembly 101. Can you have a look at Tony's question? Tony's question, yeah, Tony. All right, my, my call. I made the mistake of asking a question earlier, having problems with a uh, drive, NVMe, SSD drive. All I get from the drive is J, incorrect function. Any help appreciated? Is it connected directly up to the motherboard's NVMe controller? Or is it on a separate thing? Nick Lyons says you remind me of... Nicholas Cage in a 90s film. <laughs> Hopefully it's not face off. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Oh. That smells really nice. Why would a monitor smell nice? I'm guessing. Yeah, there is there is a few little very minor marks on it, so I think this has possibly been out on the review cycle already. But look at that, look at the razor sharp edge around the side. Not harmful, but very, very thin. And I can see RGB from somewhere. Where can, why can I see RGB from the back of this? What the? What the actual? F ah, there's something in the back of here which is metallic and it's re actually reflecting through the vent. I can see uh, RGB. I was like, why is there RGB in this monitor? It's not even turned on. Anyway, let's have a look at the back, shall we? So it does say, I Yama. And also it's a G Master. So it's part of our gaming range. It's just had a thermal take spike through it. It'll be fine. Normal kettle lead style connection like that. No separate power supplies required. Got HDMI and the display port. You've also got a uh, audio jack, and also there is a USB connection there, as you can see. And on the side, you've got USB. Oh crap! <laughs> I shouldn't give this up. I really should. There's two USB Type A's on there as well. What else have we got? So the uh, menus or buttons on the side there. I don't mind that to be fair, because once you've found them. I'm guessing they're going to come up on the on-screen display. We'll find that out shortly. If not, it does say what they are. So top one's input, up and down, menu, and off at the bottom. So that's all right. So if you find the buttons on the bottom, so that's on, off. That's menu, down, up, input. Yeah. I remembered that. So input at the top, up, down, menu, off. Right, going back yeah. to Tony. Very easy to, to, uh, to remember that. It sounds like that might be the case. I hate to say it, but I think you're absolutely right. Right, I'm going to do this sensibly. No, I'm not. 
I need cake. Now, we actually, on another story, while I'm faffing around with this, today, actually, I thought, well, we don't often really treat ourselves. So I actually bought a cake and I thought that we're going to unbox it on the stream so that we can claim the money back for the cake. How sad is that? Um, yeah, we didn't pay. It wasn't a yellow sticker one. If we're claiming for it on the business, we might as well get a decent one. Uh, is that in? There we go. That's locked in. So we don't have any height adjustment on, on this, and you only have tilt adjustment, I'm guessing, and not a huge amount of it. So that is just slightly tipping forward. Actually, it's still on the side so you can see it. So it's very, very slightly tipping forward. Actually, that's quite strong for what it is. Um, in terms of the upward angle, I don't know how many degrees is that? 15 degrees maybe? Maybe 20? I don't know. I would have to look up the instructions on that. But yeah, I think that is pretty much it. So let's get this bad boy plugged in and see what she's like. This will be interesting. I'm trying to work out how the... I think Mike has been sipping Grandpa's cough medicine tonight. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, David. Cheers and congrats on the award. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kath, can you open that window or is it open? So I'm absolutely yeah. baking. Woo! Baking a cake. I am baking a cake. Let's, let's move the. Uh, because that be gone. I am going to stab myself, aren't I? Right, let's put it up here. Mind the monitor when you swing back. Because I, I, oh, it, it disappears, doesn't it? I'm going to have to look. Put the blackboard down behind it. It's going to have to find a home. I might get one of those IKEA things and frame it. Did you leave your project protractor in your other jeans? <laughs> <laughs> That's a Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite good. Now, whenever I plug in, oh, blimey, that is bright. Actually, that's something which I haven't mentioned, the brightness on this. Because I don't know. Are you pleased to see me? <laughs> right, uh, what shall I use? Let's use the display port. This is really going to mess things up now. But we'll see. We will see. That's a nice looking panel, to be fair. You've got a greasy fingerprint there, haven't you? Probably, yeah. Great. No, the other corner, I think it is. Oh, it's got one there as well. Okay, thumbprint. You can turn off that start screen in the menu. Oh, can you? Hopefully Bob's got the exact same monitor. It's the best he's ever used. Well, there you go. He says, I think. Bob's, Bob's a winner. Just quite a while ago. I forgot what he said there. That's, that's what the, uh, the marketing should say. Don't buy a, another brand. Be like Bob. Okay, right, we have the display port. Let's see if we've got another spare one here that I can actually access. That'd be nice. How much to pay for those jeans? Oh, yeah, I've got half of them up my ass. <laughs> Six nines up your thumb. <laughs> hey, there we go. Mike's unboxing, reviews, and how to. That looks nice. Um, I don't know where this is going to end up, so let's uh, yeah, that's not bad. And the colours out of the box look very good. I'm going to move around a minute. A lot, doesn't it? Oh, it's, it's off angle, isn't it? Oh god. Let me. Uh, I think that doesn't help that there's light shining on it directly above. That's better. Look at the ISO changing on the camera because it's so bright. Let's uh, get something up. Should I turn the light off to see if that makes it look? I'm trying to think what I can open up here, which is actually going to be legit. Let's have solitaire. Now, which monitor is it going to open? Oh, it's going to open that one. Oh, solitaire needs a Windows update. We're getting it for you. <clears throat> right, in person, that actually looks a lot nicer than it does on the camera. It's always one of those tricky things to get right, actually. Let's see if I can change the ISO. That's 
really off put in. Uh, there, I think. You can, well, you can get an idea of roughly what the colour's like. It's super bright. Uh, accept and continue. Ooh. So, you see the colours there? Colours be popping. Remember when I used to go through freestyle and play each level until I completed it, starting at number one? Yeah. <laughs> and my list of what number I'd got up to. <laughs> right, is that visible? Can you guys see that? There is a bit of more effect on there. Let's see, but yeah, the colours are... Colours are nice and rich and vibrant. <coughs> I would guess about 350 nits. And the Stuart Cleary, I guess, 1500. Don't know if it's the same thing. Oh no, how many nits does that monitor have? I don't know how to play this. Uh, I'm not too sure. What is? How many nits does it say it's got, Calf? I don't know. Where would I find that? I don't know. Anyway, this uh, where are we? ISO. Let's go back to auto. We'll zoom back out. It's it's strange because it is, it's a really bright panel, and it's messing with the ISO. Something rotten. If I turn this off, and you watch the camera check, oh, the screen out. The camera will change ISO, and the brightness will change completely. Uh, error, YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. What's going on now? Have I broken that? No, I haven't. It looks right. <clears throat> Turn it back on. I want to see the, uh, the input. That does appear bright. I, I quite like the, the splash screen now. So what we've got, so uh, select input source. We've got auto, which is the default. And if you press down, you can choose specifically i guess leaving it set to auto probably makes much more sense so in the menu yeah it's pretty uh Colin asks, is it pretty straightforward stuff is it no detriment only having tilt rotation and not height adjustment it depends i i don't honestly remember the last time i adjusted the height of my monitor normally i tend to more adjust the, s the sideways, like the, the rotation of it, but than I do anything else. That's because you would set it at the right height to start with. Yeah. What if that isn't the right height to start with? Yeah, if it's not the right height to start with, then having height adjustment is useful. Quite often, I would probably suggest with any monitor, if you are... Um, actually, let me turn this off to an angle. So. It says 250 nits on a review. Thanks, Maya. It seems like brighter. It does seem like it's considerably brighter than 250 nits. Uh, Stuart says 369 nits at 100% brightness. Yeah, I would say it's closer to 300 and something. Just from my very, very limited knowledge. I <coughs> think it's, it's got 400 nits. I will find out in time for the review. But basically, um, actually that's a good test of the, uh, the viewing angles. Is that still visible on a very, yeah, even on that sort of angle, it's still visible. So you've got some really good viewing angles on there, which is kind of an IPS thing anyway. <clears throat> Overall, my initial impression of the straight out of the box colors is it looks really nice. Although saying that, I think the reds are a little bit popping again. I reckon it might be something to do with my eyesight. Because I'm noticing all red seems to be popping more these days. Or is it just I'm noticing it more? I don't know. Sorry, you're not laughing at you, ugly Bob. But it does look quite nice, quite sharp, quite crisp. 24 inches with um, 1080p. For a lot of people, it's kind of like the sweet spot. As you start going bigger, like 27 inches, 1080p does get a little bit pixelated if you haven't got the pixel density. And there is a very, very small bezel around that. So this is actually something which bugs me a lot with monitor manufacturers. They say, oh, it's got a micro bezel. So you've got this like very fine edge around the outside, which gives you the impression that there's literally like an edgeless screen. And they often 
advertise it as that, but actually there's a very, very slight black indentation all the way around, which is about, I don't know, I'm guessing it's about two millimeters, maybe slightly more. Is that more to a 60HZ? No, it's 165HZ. So this is actually like a proper bona fide gaming monitor, but with IPS colors, fast display, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I like it. For 130 pounds for 165 hertz IPS, there isn't a lot on the market. <clears throat> Excuse me. That will touch it. The only thing I suppose which would be its kind of direct competition at the moment would be those Harari monitors. They've got a special offer at the moment. Their 24 inch 165 hertz monitor, which I believe is IPS, uh, just slightly over a hundred pounds. So a significant discount at the moment. Normally it's about 130, 140. I don't know. I've not seen one of those in person other than the one that I reviewed a while back, which I wasn't overly impressed with. I didn't think the color accuracy was particularly good, but it was a different model. So to be fair, a lot of these manufacturers kind of source panels from similar places. It'd be interesting to see what uh, what panel manufacturer this actually is. But yeah, it's VESA mountable, so if you do want to put it onto a different stand, if you don't quite like the height adjustment thing, you can put it on a wall mount or put it on just a, a separate stand, which you can purchase relatively inexpensively, kind of on eBay and places like that, or just brand new off Amazon. But yeah, I like it. Happy days. It's, it's hard to get excited about a monitor until you've actually used it for a while and you're used to it. But in terms of pricing, specifications, features, it's uh, it's pretty much gets a, a yes from me, I think, at the moment. And normally with IPS screens, you get that weird kind of banding effect if you get really close to it. You can almost see the individual pixels, but even getting really close to this, I can, oh yeah, I can just about make them out there if I squint. Here, no problem. Obviously, normal kind of viewing position, you're never going to see it in a million years. And I think the colors look really nice. Again, very hard to do in a video, clearly, but that is definitely something for a work in progress. One to keep your eye on, I'm sure. Oh, that monitor. Yeah. Oh. Now we get the old display port thing where they lock in and you can't get the damn things out. Arali says, if I did not have LG monitors, I would it, I would be Yama, had many, and love them. It would be. Uh, I, Yama. <laughs> saying it wrong. Never, yeah. never, ever going to get that <laughs> to work, am I? <laughs> mm. Right, so let's put that to one side. I suppose I should pack it away, really, but let's have some cake, Kath. Oh, I forgot to get a knife. Just, just... Put it in a blender and just shove it down my throat. I think that's the way forward. Obviously, never put a monitor face down because it's uh, generally seen as a bad thing. It comes apart it. pretty nice. Why does YouTube think it's not getting enough data? That bothers me. Let's have a look at your questions, see if I can read them out while I'm doing this. Uh, David Underhill, I love my Acer monitor. I have six plus one Philips. Yeah, to be fair, Acer monitors, this one that I've got here, which is uh, Old Faithful, that thing was $149.99, I think, or $179.99. That's the 27-inch version. So that's the, uh, I think it's the HL274, uh, and yeah, it's been great. Actually, I bought it as a display monitor to go above a bed on the uh, the TV program that we worked on. So it's supposed to be displaying sort of medical stats, but uh, we got to the point where someone was uh, doing some repair work on the set and stove the ladder into it. So there was a ding on the screen. Obviously, for most purposes, it didn't really show up at all, but they didn't like it. So they're like, right, we need to get a replacement. So they replaced it, etc., etc. I chucked it in this. Oh, the power button broke as well, which was the other major defect. So the power button doesn't work. 
So you can't turn it on or off, which again, on a TV set, if they want to quickly turn a monitor off, they're not happy about doing anything which involves any sort of wire pulling, wire pulling or actual work. So they just expect it to be, uh, it's very simple and straightforward. So they're like, no, nope, not putting up with that. So I said, chuck in the skip. So I threw it in the skip. And then as I was walking back from the skip, I'm thinking to myself, actually, that seems like a terrible waste of a potentially a usable monitor for something. So I said to the boss man, I said, boss man, what's, what's the deal? Can I, uh, can I go and rescue that from the skip? He's like, well, if it's in the skip, yeah, of course, do what you like with it. Better you have it than it goes to landfill. So I said, yes, I agree 100%. And it, and, uh, it became Cav's monitor for a while. Although, yeah, she got a bit pissed off of it as well because you can't turn it on or off. And you basically can't access the, uh, the menus or anything. But it was, uh, it was per perfectly serviceable for a while. And the only reason I use it there is as a monitor because I don't necessarily have to have any... Uh, any particular kind of input to it. it doesn't have to be color accurate it's only for me to gauge if focus is working and Microphone. microphones plugged in which i didn't check this week there is a video coming out actually where you'll see me being quite jovial but really i'm dying internally and it's because is that the right way around Yeah, I uh, forgot to turn on the monitor, uh, the uh, the microphone. Well, I think that is around the wrong way. Uh, what the hell? It's going in the box. Like like it or lump it, you're going back in that box. This is fun. Yeah, so I I, I recorded the video, did the whole thing, sweating my uh, my cobblers off in this little dining room of ours i.e. makeshift studio and uh, just started editing the video and I've split it into two oh that didn't go in there properly can you uh, figure that out yeah we do oh bollocks I excuse my French why didn't that go in properly I've got because it's not going all the way down to the bottom of the box you can't close the lid although saying that I don't think it closed originally I could be wrong anyway Better look before I sit down. Don't want to break me uh, unthinkables. Squash potatoes, sir. No, I just sat down too fast. Let's have a cake. I need some sustenance. So this, ladies and gentlemen, of the jewellery is the uh, prime exhibit of why I'm a fatty. This is the Taste the Difference Summer Edition Vanilla Latte Cake. Wow. With a coffee-soaked sponge, no less. Best before the 18th of August which is uh, a few days away, so we better consume some of this already. Uh, for those of you worried about calories, etc., don't, e don't even look. Yeah, we will cut the cake into bits, so actually all the calories will escape, and you don't have to consume them. Now, technically, I shouldn't really be having this much sugar, but it's been a long day, and whatever. And we're celebrating, because we are the award-winning Mike's Unboxing YouTube channel. Never going to get tired of that. Uh, it's got a hat on it. This looks like it could be uh, rather pleasant. Oh. Oh. It smells like vanilla latte, which is ironic because it's a vanilla latte cake, as it says on the box. Sweet baby Jesus. This is where he cuts it in half. <laughs> Take one big bite and you can say you had one piece. No, because the calories would be in that. Yeah, you got to cut it because the calories don't escape. <laughs> Them's the rules. Now. A packet of five jam donuts for me. <laughs> is this the right thing to do? Should you actually consume the icing from the side? I think. Excuse fingers. Wow. In terms of, oh, holy. I don't know where Poppy Dora is, but. Wow. Calf, do you wanna, oh, there is so much sugar in that. That's incredible. Lucky man says lick the fecker, <laughs> yes. Right, let's, uh, let's see what this is like internally. Not, I'm not gonna 
stick it in me, but well, yeah, I'm going to stick it in my face. Now, do you cut it into four? No, not desktop. That's the other one. I want the overhead. Do you cut it into four? Or do you cut it into eight? That is the question. I think for my own sanity and for the uh, longevity of the stream, I think cutting into... Oh. Excuse fingers. Cut into eight, I think, works. <clears throat> a little bit of an uneven dispersal of... Um, cocoa on the top so I think those are going to be more cocoa-ish than those but ultimately I think it should be okay now we'll look on the side do we have a soggy bottom Bob no. Why are you saying that? <laughs> so this is all sticky gooey coffee inside because it's coffee infused we've got a layer <laughs> of ice in in that. the middle <laughs> so yeah I'm surprised I cut it actually and let's see what this bad boy is like where's your cup of tea in front of you. It's in front of me. Let's go to the main camera. Let's see what this bad boy is like. And actually, the top half is coffee cake, and the bottom, I think, is um, vanilla sponge. So, mm. yeah, that's not Everyone bad. Everyone runs to Tesco's and buys some cake. Top half is coffee. Definitely. Mmm. <laughs> Eat without licking lips. Absolutely impossible. It's not. I have had donuts like that before. And let's see if the bottom bit. Mmm. 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 Do you want to go on the table, Flame? Absolutely unboxed. Catherine, take it away. Thank you, but I've got a cat on my desk. Absolutely going to be off of my nut. There's a lot of sugar in there. Woo! Mmm. 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 Is that today? Mmm. Well, both of them. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Colin, for sending the PayPal donation over. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. I should be sending you it to help out that young girl. Did I say it was a girl? I did now. See, that's why we shouldn't have sugar. He's got a cup of tea. I've got a cup of tea. Slightly uh, minging. Wifely duty already done. Mm. Oh, Okie dokie. You'll be peeing honey <laughs> <laughs> if there if there's any if there's any uh justice in the world I will be. After a stream, I rarely go to sleep before three AM. Yeah. Normally it's late. Right then, let's move on to the next thing. Now we've got an infusion of sugar. Let's get this done. So John's bow, magic fan, ZF120, ARGB, three in one. Two in one. So this is a donation from Paul Hollywood. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Ugly Bob. Sorry. And uh, these were from AliExpress. I did say in the review, I've actually done the review on these already. I did say in the review, do look out when you're buying these. Because if you buy them from AliExpress and certain other UK retailers, you will pay a significantly better price than you will from some others. So do beware. There are some, I'm not going to say unscrupulous, because you never know where they're getting them from to get the prices, but there are some places selling these for as much as 10 to £12 per fan. Whereas you can get the five pack with a hub for about 30 quid, without too much difficulty, as Bob will attest to. So, yes, let's take a look and see what we get. So these are actually quite interesting. The pack that Bob's got, which I was struggling to find a link for, but I kind of worked out. So it comes with this hub, which is from a company called Chuser, which I've never heard of before. And it actually seems like a, a pretty decent little hub. It's very much minimalist in what it tries to do or what it achieves. What the list? Are we on track? I think we are. The list is over there. You can't get anything off for ages. I've got sticky hands now. 
Right, let me tick off my list. Hang on. So, uh, items this week. So, yes, done that one. The master monitor. John's boat is actually the next one. Uh, other topics, done that, done that. Um, yeah, those are for at the very end. Eat cake went on there. Eat cake isn't on there, so we may have to uh, add an amendum. The minutes of the stream. <laughs> so, let's get this on the, uh, the overhead. So, this little hub... It's actually cool because it's got a display on the back showing you what goes where anyway. So if you lose the instructions, which are basically lost anyway, um, there's no real need for instructions to be fair. So you've got five outlets for addressable RGB. One, two, three, four, five. On the other side, one, two, three, four, five. So 10 in total. You've then got SATA power going in this side. And the top one, the single one on its own is the addressable RGB input that it's going to replicate. So in uh, the grand scheme of things, you get this cable, which has got a reasonable length to it. I'm guessing that is about 40 centimeters, I want to say. Let's have a quick measure. Um, well, no, closer to 50. I was way out. 10 centimeters is a lot, especially if you're trying to park. So you get the cable, three pin, five volt addressable RGB, plug that in there. Plug this end into your motherboard, and then you can power all of the addressable RGB for other devices, fans, hubs, uh, not hubs, sorry, um, fans, strips, pump heads, all those kinds of things, you can do that. I'm getting greasy fingers everywhere. So that is very cool. Those on their own normally sell, for some of the reason, about 10 pounds, depending on where you're shopping. If you've gone on Amazon, that sort of thing, 10 quid. If you go on to AliExpress, probably two, three pounds, something like that. And then we can have a look at the fans. So you get Magic Fan, there's a three in one, two in one. So two in one, obviously, two pack, three in one is a three pack. I think we'll take a look at the three pack. I think that makes more sense and is more visually appealing. I need one for this mic. I've got a feeling they do, um, I've got a feeling they do one for this as well. I'm not entirely sure, I think they do. So in the accessories box, there is a single cable for connection. So this plugs into one of the fans on the main connector there, and that splits into a four pin PWM, five volt addressable RGB, and five volt addressable RGB pass through, male to female. So one of those. You also get an extension cable. So if you don't want all of your fans actually linked together, you don't have to. And of course it comes with uh, case screws, which are unfortunately are black, even though this is a, uh, a white set of fans. Unfortunate, but not the end of the world. So looking in the fans, they come in this nice kind of styrofoam, which is always very handy. And you can see three fans. So it's pretty straightforward what they've actually attempted to do. They've kind of done it like Lego. So on the side, you've got a five pin connection. And on the other side, you've got a eight pin and a six pin. Oh, you're on the wrong camera. And you're, sh you're sh cutting out all the light. I had flame, we wanted to see cats just now. How did they? Cakes. They you see that. I'm wiping my nose so you can see that. We don't see them over there, are they? Wally. Calf's trying to sneak Amy. into the shop. Look the other way, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, cat auto detect. No, not, not going to do it. Better not put you down to attract everything with your mind. He's not a performing monkey, I am. <clears throat> anyway, so these are the fans uh, in white. They're slightly off white. So if you've got like a, a really razor sharp, bright white case. They are slightly off-white. That is something which I'm noticing more and more actually these days, that some cases are that kind of bluey white, where some are the more creamy whites. The, the Series 500, yeah, Series 500 behind me is that sort of more creamier white. So that would work really well in there. But there's some cases, I think the, um, which one was it recently? The Ions, uh, KZZ is like a really blue white. It doesn't look very good in there at all. And also the Liang Li 216 is that kind of sharper, brighter, bluer white as well. So yeah, potentially that's not gonna work well. Multiple blade setup. So you've got 
uh, nine blade fan, opaque blades for letting RGB out, etc. Something which is slightly problematic with these is the amount of physical supports on the back. So if you've seen the review for the, uh, what was it, the Olzai i360, I noticed in there that I'm pretty sure it's almost exactly the same fans, just they connect differently. And there is a weird kind of resonance you get from those blades. And it's almost like if you watched old programs, like War, World War II programs, and you hear biplanes, there's that kind of drone that you get from airplane blades. And it seems to really replicate on these at higher RPMs. Do excuse the uh, the sirens outside. We are in the middle of a war zone or something, clearly. Uh, what's the fan bearing type, Mike? Hydraulic bearing. Uh, you can actually see part of the the makeup of it. Hopefully that's going to focus in okay. So you can see the steel shaft bearing. And it's a hydraulic one as well. So they've actually made it so the blades, there's a very, very close tolerance between the actual blade and the frame to keep some of the static pressure in. Uh, RPM wise, I think they stated somewhere between 800 and 1500 RPM. Mookie. Mookie. Do hubs require another program to run consistently in the background to maintain the program in? No. No, these, the hub here, basically whatever your motherboard's pushing out it'll grab the signal and do it so it'll update as it needs to it won't kind of lose information because it's just a pass through effectively so to put these together there's little lugs there they basically go into the other side so let's do the uh, overhead so what we do is get them kind of lined up and a little bit of a wiggle oh typical oh, there we go there we go. So sometimes they need a little bit of a wiggle. That is the problem with some of these because the pins are slightly off sometimes. They don't always want to go straight in. Yeah, that one went in a lot easier. If you do it a couple of times, it gets a little bit easier. And you can see, there you go. A complete set of three fans all put together. Uh, no additional wiring needed other than you have your single connection on the end here which plugs in like so. And then that leaves you with a single four pin PWM and your addressable RGB, which you can plug into your motherboard, into a hub, fan controllers, whatever you want to plug it into. That essentially is entirely down to you, however you want to do it. But that is the basic kind of gist of them. If for some reason you want to have maybe uh, two fans at the front and maybe one towards the back, not a problem, it's just unplug those grab your extension cable and these are a little bit harder to see in this light so do uh, do bear with me while I try and find this right. oh, my eyes. <laughs> sorry Was it flame? That's better. so that goes on there and then on the other end there so you get the idea it's basically a fly lead which connects them up so that's going to pass on the uh, the information there's actually a pretty decent length in there as well so you're looking at somewhere around like 14 inches or 360 mil so basically the length of a radiator ironically so two two fans at the front of your case maybe one in the top a little bit of a stretch to maybe get to the very back it's, I guess it's going to depend on your kind of case layout, but yeah, hopefully from that you can understand the principle behind it. And that way round. And you physically can't put them in the wrong way. It, it won't allow you to. There you go. They just snap together with a very convincing kind of dunk. So yeah, there you go. That is uh, that's what they're all about. It's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. It's actually a relatively kind of handy design the way they've done it. But the thing is, what do they look and sound like? Now this is where things take a little bit of a turn for the worse, as I probably hinted at a little bit earlier. 
So the noise profile of these is very unusual and I'm not entirely sure how well the noise profile comes out on camera. When I made the video, I was listening to it back and I'm thinking, I'm sure it sounded a bit different from that. But hopefully in a live stream, you should be able to hear the kind of the raw performance of what the microphone is able to hear. Some of you may not notice it at all. Again, it depends on what your hearing's like. Some people have got like amazing hearing and some people have got less good hearing. So <laughs> it all is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's all, I don't know. I can't even think what the word is now. Too much sugar has absolutely annihilated my brain cells. So the best thing to do, I'm just gonna hook these up to the PC behind me and you can hear exactly what it sounds like and see what they look like, which is probably the easiest thing to do. Ow, that hurt. And I've still got about two quids worth of denim up my ass. <laughs> Calf appreciated that. No one else did, but I, I, I heard her laugh and chuckle. All right, trying to stab myself with the Thermal Take Award from the Mike's Unboxing Award winning unboxing channel. <laughs> I don't know, I don't even know what I'm saying now. Where's my bloody torch gone? I had it a second ago, there it is. Sorry. Right, I've got, I got to see where the connectors are. Oh dear. God, that cake has got so much sugar in it. Have you, have you had a piece? Yeah. Just the one? Yeah. One's enough, isn't it? Normally we'd do a cake like that. Each. No, we wouldn't. I'm kidding. Wow. I'll tell you what. Bang! Thank you. That's actually better than Red Bull. Right, there you go. Can you actually see those? Is that visible on camera? I can't even tell. Yeah, I think it is. Let's turn the lights off for a minute, Calf, please, if you wouldn't mind. Not sure if that's going to help or hinder. And, uh, sorry, is it? There's a Mike's Unboxing Award in the way. Who's put that there? Kenny D says, these are the fans that I suggested on the video suggestions channel on the Discord. Ah, well done. And Bob must have listened to you. Yeah, and then Bob replied, Kenny D, you're the one that prompted me to send them in. Bless your heart. Right, let's plug in the fans. Oh, that's not the plug. So there they are, spinning away. But they've got no care in the world whatsoever. And at the moment they're set to the lowest possible rating. So let's uh, give you a listen to that. And hopefully you can hear that. Can, can you hear it? There's a very, very minimal whine. Which might be exacerbated or at least emphasised if I unplug it. So I'll be quiet now and I'll unplug the cable in about 10 seconds. So listen up and if you want to turn your volume up, feel free. And there you go, I've unplugged them. So you can, there's definitely um, some sort of turbulence thing going on with that design. It's hard to hear it. And if you've got a PC which has got other fans in it, it's probably going to be quite hard to do anyway. From this sort of distance, this is a good, what, two foot away from the microphone. You can't hear them at all. I think you can hear it. Okay, Bob's got headphones on, turned up, and can barely hear it. Hear it. Okay. And the D doesn't really hear it. Thanks for, thanks for that. I'm going to go into the MSI center now. And I'm going to increase the RPM and actually want to validate what setting I'm currently on. So customize what we uh, pump system fan three, I think it is. I could hear it. All those arms in the back, probably. Yeah. Three. So at the moment, those are around about. Um, you probably can't see it on the screen there, but they're about 750 RPM. They're absolutely fine. There's a very, very minimal uh, whine to it there. So let's turn them up onto full blast. And I'll lift them up as well, just so there's nothing uh, coming through there. Something I've noticed as well, their spin up speed or the PWM response time is actually very slow. So you don't get that initial kind of rush. 
Oh, Mabes. So there you go. That is with them. They're 1465 RPM, 1494, and they're kind of topping out there. So that is their maximum speed. So if I get a bit closer, I'll have to do it off angle because otherwise you'll hear wind noise. But can you hear that? It's kind of almost like a drone. So if I, again, if I unplug them, in fact, actually, anything in front of them as well, they get really upset. So if I put my hand in front, like if there's nothing there, oh, it's hard to do. So without any obstruction, again, this is at full blast, so you, you must expect some noise. But there's definitely a, a sort of... A, a, Sorry. I'll quickly unplug them. You can hear it, can't you, straight away. It's uh, the sound of silence. Yeah, it, yeah, it is, a, it is a drone. It actually sounds like a drone, like those that kind of noise you get from a drone motor. And I think that's because with a drone, normally you get them with uh, like blades that are enclosed. Oh shit! Yeah, don't put your fingers in. The, oh fuck! Don't put your fingers in the blades, kids. It's not fun. That's a bit too. Well, you know me. I do like to try and entertain. Right, get the drone out. No pun intended. Yeah. And compare. Yeah. Right. So that is now down to uh, four hundred RPM. And at 400 RPM, they are absolutely 100% totally silent. You cannot hear them at all. There's literally nothing coming out of them. So between 400 and I would say uh, probably about 800 is that sweet spot. So that's about 50 to 60% RPM. So if you're a real, real stickler for noise, then anything under 800 rpm 850 is going to be absolutely fine they're not noisy as such it's just that it's a pitch and some people are really sensitive to it inside a pc case i think you would probably never notice it which is handy because we will be doing let's unplug those Sorry, Kathy, put the light back on there if you wouldn't mind. Please, thanking you. But they want you to put the cake in the blades. I'm not putting the cake in the blades. What's the matter with you, lunatics? <laughs> You're all insane. I thought I was supposed to be the insane one. Um, uh, yeah. Can you get the drone out to compare them? It, no. Inside a case, I think it's going to be a different story altogether because you've got a lot of other variables. Testing fans like this is kind of irrelevant, really. But it does give you some idea of what they sound like and um, also obviously what they look like and in terms of what they look like i think they look freaking amazing and the fact they haven't put any uh, john's bow nonsense like labels on there i think is uh, to their benefit so you don't have anything wibbling around off center in fact you can see the bearings and all that so if you do need to oil them for any reason then you can put a quick drop of oil in there because they are essentially open apart from where you've got the uh, fluid seal inside so there you go. These are going to be going into the John's Bow D41 case. We've also got the John's Bow uh, Pisa cooler, which Bob sent a little while back. So I'm finally going to get that done. I've been trying to work out what I'm going to do or how to go about doing that. So that is, uh, well, now that NZXT have turned around and said basically the BIOS for that board is kind of the best you're going to get, like it or lump it. It's kind of forced my hand a little bit, so I am going to put my system, the Intel system, into the John's Bow D41 case, test out these fans, test out the cooler and all that sort of stuff, and uh, see how that goes. The one with the built-in TV screen on it. I thought that would be a quite a nice little project build to do. See how that goes. And then, once I've done that, I can then take it all out, and then I can build it into the GameMax Infinity, which I've literally just finished reviewing today. 
Cheers, Tony. So yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a busy few weeks coming up, uh, as they always are. And it's such a shame that for a lot of this stuff, I have to kind of build it up and then take it all apart and then build it up to get it apart. But potentially, it could have a, a slightly silver lining on it because if we uh, try and get some bits together for uh, Colin's project, then hopefully we can uh, work something out along those lines. Oh, and the yeah, and the weather sucks at the moment, so there's no point sunbathing. So there you go. There are the John's Bow Magic Fans, the ZF120s. What do you think of them? Honest opinions. I know Bob's in the chat, so if you don't like him, you don't want to offend him. But to be honest with you, Bob is a big grown-up now. And uh, I'm sure with his uh, work history, he's suffered much much worse than anything that you guys can come up with i personally think they're actually very good i'm a little disappointed in the the frequency of them but ultimately it's a relatively inexpensive fan set if you think you're getting five fans plus a controller for about 30 quid which is considerably better than pretty much I can't think of any other brand which it comes close. The closest I can remember is probably the uh, the up here ones from ages ago. Like uh, I think that was pre-COVID, and that was thirty-seven pounds, I think, for a five-pack or six-pack with a hub. And th they weren't perfect; they were pretty decent. But considering times have changed dramatically, I think they're uh, they're pretty cool for what they are. Ricky? Just have your. Um, have your expectations somewhat tempered they're not going to be silent because they're not that kind of fan you if you want that sort of silence you're going to have to go for something like the arctic um p12 those are probably amongst the best in the market very quiet even under high rpm or stump up for noctuas which are ridiculously expensive bob says he's a big boy he can take it funny it does say that in the toilets Rakeach says, nice fans, Mike. Awesome. Uh, don't say that, they'll send you a John's Bow Award. <laughs> yeah. Just keep on racking them up. You'll have to put a new shelf in. No, that's never going to happen. Well, you unlikely. Did, you did have um, a sort of a camera award once, didn't you? Did I? You had that little camera with Mike's unboxing written on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's not really an award, was it? it was a kind of... I've actually got another award down here. Oh, it's fallen off. Where is it? It was attached to that, wasn't it? Oh, no. oh no, it says it on the bottom. This is my other award that I got. This is from um, one of the actresses on Casualty, uh, Sonetra Sarker, who played... I'm trying to think what her character name was now. What was her character? Christ, I can't think. It's been so long. Um, when she left, she actually gave out some of these ducks that are leaving do. And it says, uh, to Mike, thank you for the extra help you have given Zoe uh, Love name. Sinetra. Yeah, Zoe, Zoe Hannah. I'll see if you can see that. Come on, focus, you useless piece of plastic. No, you did you did get some award. They were putting it all through Facebook when we had our Facebook page before it got taken down. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Just so There. There you go. It's amazing how much spare time Mike had to write that to himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair play, there was actually some uh, very cool people who worked on Casualty. Unfortunately, they were the minority rather than the majority. Uh, Bob says, you flipping wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that, you must have put that before I said it. <laughs> Ugly Bob says, I once told Keith Harris to F off because he didn't have Cuddles the Chimp with him. That's what he claimed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. 
Right, uh, where are we at? Sorry, we got, we'll, we'll blast through this very last one because I have kind of promised this one. And actually, it's a good contrast to what we've just done. Well, it's not a contrast, but it is the same thing. So John's with fans, we've done that. The laptop, they might get not re get repaired. Let's quickly go through that, actually, because that is a quick one we can get through. And I've had enough sugar, so I should be able to cope with it. So this is a uh, Hewlett Packard laptop. The model number, I can't even see. The model number is so ridiculously small. It's essentially, I think it is a, possibly a dual core N5 something or other. The model number escapes me, but it's like a D0015 or something. Do you want me to read it for you again? Yeah, maybe. I bring it over. Don't worry, I got the magnifying glass on hand. No, I haven't. Where do I put the magnifying? There it is. I got it. Shh. You can set in fire Shh. the bloody house with that in the sun. Still can't see it. Why would you do grey writing on something like this? I can see it perfectly fine. Oh, shut up. <laughs> do you want me to read it? Like that? No, I'm not giving in. I refuse to give in. I'm going to see it if it bloody kills me. Uh, I see no ships. Christ, it's done in such a stupid font as well. Yeah, arse. Uh, model i5 DA005. Uh, sorry, 0075NA. So it's a HP laptop, model 15, DA0075 something A. <laughs> NA. Well, NA, like I can't see it. Yeah, that, that's, that should be the optician's test. Like, can you read a laptop thing? No, I can't. Right, feck it. You need glasses. Even with a black magnifying glass, I can't see the fecker. Right, anyway. Moving on. <laughs> so this laptop uh, has been somewhat of a workhorse. Uh, it's actually Angel's boyfriend's. So shout out What's to him. Say, it's boyfriend. kind of, it's had better times. So you see it's a bit scuffed here. Touchpad's worn. One of the letters is missing. The A letter is missing. The it's a little bit grubby. I have actually cleaned this quite considerably from how it came in. So the dog actually ate that off there. Got a big dog. He's a painter, so he takes it to work. Yeah. He's a painter and decorator, takes it to work with him, obviously eating dinner, coffee, drinks, etc. Splash. You get the general idea. So this, because of the processor this is using, it, from what I can tell from the Crucial website, this will only support a maximum of eight gigabytes of RAM. Now currently it has four gigabytes installed and it has a, I believe it's a one terabyte hard disk drive. So kind of having a look at it, working out what's wrong, pricing things up, 16 gigs of RAM is what I originally costed in for, assuming that it had two slots. Uh, that was about 30 pounds. That isn't gonna happen, so it's gonna have to be a single slot, and it's only gonna be at eight gig. So again, eight gigs for Windows, is that enough? I'm not entirely convinced, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but that is gonna be about 20 pounds. Uh, a 500 or 480 gig SSD, about 20 pounds here in the UK, so that's a pretty decent investment. I'm hoping those two things will give this thing a breath of life, as it did with that laptop we did on Fix or Fail recently. The only other thing is, because this is, if you've ever owned HP 15 series, you'll know this is a thing, that the actual screen is just all basically plastic, and there is a crack across the screen there and down there, so it kind of needs a screen as well. Now the screen I can get for about 50 pounds, I think it is. In actual fact, yeah, that is, looks like that's come unhinged. So that might be why that wasn't closing down properly. But yeah, basically I think it's been dropped at some point. Um, in transparency, I actually did drop it again myself, which possibly hasn't helped matters, but hey, I'm the one who's gonna have to repair it. But it comes to the point of, if I looked for one of these on eBay, that you're looking at about 100 pounds to replace it with one which is kind of working in, in the original condition. So it would still need more RAM, it would still probably need an SSD. So it really has got to the point of kind of what do you do with equipment like this where HP and other vendors, they're not alone in this at all, that no one else is immune from it sort of thing, a lot of companies do it. Sending a laptop with what is effectively a very, very subpar processor and is really only suitable for word processing tasks at best. It's a particularly obnoxious experience at four gigs of RAM 
with Windows 10 or Windows 11. So yeah, it brings up all those questions like, in a decent condition, is it even worth £100 still? Even after spending 50 on a screen, another 50 on the RAM and the hard drive. What do you do with a unit like this? Do you upgrade it? Do you put the extra money into it to give it maybe a few more months of extra life? Or do you kind of cut your losses and look for something else? You can pick up kind of secondhand used Dells with like i5 processors, eight gigs or 16 gigs of RAM and an old 240 gig SSD with not quite such a nice uh, layout and design as this, maybe a bit smaller, smaller screen possibly for kind of 100, 150 pounds. So it's very difficult to work out what you actually do with a unit like this. It's very much in that um, kind of no man's land. It's not rubbish enough to throw away, but I would argue it's not good enough to warrant spending money on. Does that make sense? I don't know. This is something which I'm, I've been deliberating on. I've had this for about a couple of days now, and I know it's somewhat of a workhorse unit, but I don't know. If you were taking it to a shop to be repaired and you had to pay for the labour, etc., the labour would probably be worth more than the laptop. So what do we do with units like this? There's You can't really strip it down for parts because kind of the parts aren't really worth a great deal. And the, in this particular instance, the RAM is only four gigs, which is kind of almost useless. The battery seems okay. The charging port I've already fixed. That was a bit loose, so I've actually put some uh, JB weld in there to hold it in place, and that works actually much better now. But yeah, a difficult one to, to know what to do with. I've ordered the RAM and the SSD anyway. And I think the first thing I'll do is I'll install the RAM, see what the performance is like, see if it improves it at all. If it does a little bit, I'll then try an SSD as well, see what the performance is like then, and then kind of make up my mind whether or not we're gonna do the, uh, the screen as well, or whether or not they can live with the screen being as it is. That way we're only kind of 40 pounds in, rather yeah, than right. being 90, which is a little bit much. Keep it for watching YouTube. I think that's all they watch. That's, yeah, Netflix literally, and Netflix and YouTube and Snapchat. And he doesn't have a mobile phone, yeah. so that is basically what he takes around with him to watch things on as he works and stuff. I can see there in your comments, yeah, I hate laptops. Uh, one terabyte SSD in there. That would be nice. That's, I think that's what it needs. Uh, it only has Intel H, uh, UHD graphics 600, so eight gig probably okay. Yeah, because the Intel graphics will share like a gig. So it gives Windows a little bit more breathing room. It's a shame. If anyone's actually got one of these and tried it to see if it actually supports 16 gigs on yeah. a single stick, that would be very cool. Because I think that would make a bit of a difference. Yeah, say the names who Viali. oh yeah Vialia. they repair quite a few of them yeah the ssd and ram will make a huge difference well we've got it coming in that's going to arrive on monday got that scheduled for delivery monday so i'll do the ram i'll do the hard drive i'll do the recording of the videos as well and go through this basically this entire process again and uh yeah see if we can breathe a little bit of life into this just so it's going a little bit longer it's actually ironic because the laptop I bought, the HP, is it the G250 or the HP 245, literally the, exactly the same layout as this, just a smaller screen. So yeah, it's very easy to get into and work on anyway. So that in itself is uh, is pretty cool. How much is um, the newer version? Actually, the, uh, the jack for the uh, Ethernet was broken as well, so I've managed to repair that by using JB Weld. That is actually in there. I, I honestly don't understand how bad this is. There's basically two bits of plastic with a bit of metal across. And of course, every time you flex that, the metal is just dying to snap off, which I think it did, which is potentially what caused it to not charge because the charging port is right next to the, that jack. So I think the metal shorted out. That's why it wasn't charging because originally it just, it was no display or anything. So we have done a little bit of work on that already. Uh, hopefully we'll do a little bit more and uh, hopefully try and resurrect it. It would be nice to get it up and working. I did kind of get to the thing of like sod it. I'll just give him my laptop, and be done with it, and just forget I've ever seen that thing. But it is kind of an interesting thing to do. Uh, Ugly Bob, um, you 
you could swap the HD. Is this working? Hello, McFry. McFry! Um, Ugly Bob. You could swap the HD into another laptop. That to me. Not sure. O'Reilly says, recently got HP laptop PC 15S, uh, Intel Core i3 1115G4 processor, 8 gigs RAM, 256 SSD, 6, 15.6 for work, which is about 350. Yeah, it's quite a jump, isn't it, to get something like that. I've seen a few of those about, and I was kind of interested. But we'll see. I'm tempted to install um, Chrome OS on it, being that all they do is Netflix, uh, Snapchat. I think probably Chrome OS will do that quite nicely, but then it has to be connected to the internet, which is a little bit unfortunate. But we'll see. A hole. Uh, O'Reilly says, I think the supported RAM capacity is hardware limited with HP BIOS. <laughs> Typical. Uh, Mookie MC says, it seems like a tower line laptop, uh, sorry, lower line laptop, uh, <laughs> right. like we can pick up at Walmart here in the USA. How much is a newer version? I'm not sure. It's going to be around about 350, 400, I think. Maybe a little bit less. Viali says, got three laptops here and they're all in a cupboard. Hate them. I'm not, I'd rather use a desktop if I can, but laptops do have their use. And Riley says, I'll have a go, though, with a single 16 GB stick. Cool, thank you. Yeah, 230 in the UK. See, if the newer version is only 230, it's kind of like hmm, 100 pounds into like a, a dying platform. Newer ones can have better battery, better efficiencies, better processor, more RAM to begin with. It's hard, very hard. Anyway, let's not be too depressed. Let's look at some fans from GameMax. GameMax, if you're watching, GameMax UK, um, the award, if you can get one, kind of like that one in the background from Tunnel Take, that'd be very nice. Obviously, crystal, not glass. We're not like animals. Says me with a denim up my ass and half a cake in my face. Oh, I don't want those three. Oh, yeah, I do, actually. Do you? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. So this is the Game Max Velocity fan set. Now, I was actually confused with this because uh, Game Max sent me the Game Max Infinity case to review, and I was kind of like, why are they giving me all these fans? I don't understand how this works. I assume that there's different SKUs of that case available which have this kind of stuff already installed. But it appears that isn't the case. It appears they sent this as a separate thing to say this is one of the kits we do of fans... You can either do a separate review or you can put it in your case, do kind of whatever you want to do. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to have a look at it and see what it's all about. So the Velocity 3-in-1 pack, or the Game Max ARGB 3-in-1 pack, is a little bit confusing because you get three fans like these. So three Velocity fans, ARGB, they've got 24 addressable RGB LEDs in them. So they actually look very, very cool. There's a few downsides to them, one of which is they have Molex connections. You don't have to use those, but they are there. Uh, they are three pin voltage controlled, which is kind of a weird thing to see on modern fans. But again, very cheap, much like the John's Bow ones. The John's Bow ones, I think, look more professional. These look arguably a little bit more kind of gamery. That's a thing. More. Well, these are of an era, let's say. So. Up to kind of 2018, 2019, 2020, this was the sort of fans which were flooding the market with this type of look. So it has dated them a little bit, but they're cheap and cheerful and they don't make a lot of noise, so there is a lot to like. It also comes with the Game Max ARGB hub. So this is this is actually a weird one because well, it's got six ports on it, okay? So you've got four on that side for addressable RGB, two on that side, and on this side you've got six PWM headers. So this is where it gets really weird, because I plugged in a PWM fan on there, and it just went nuts. It went to 
like 100%, and I was finding it extremely difficult to control. It does come with a remote control as well, which has three dedicated fan speeds, so there's a slow, medium, and high. Now, I found that these fans work perfectly with this hub, like perfectly. Plug them in, go into your motherboard, go into MSI Center, choose a PWM control, and you can control these things down to, I think it's like 400 RPM, and they max out about 1500, I think it was. Yeah, 1500. So absolutely amazing PWM control from total silence up to moving a little bit of air. And, uh, but weirdly, they don't give an RPM if you plug them into the hub. If you plug these in directly to a motherboard, you can control them via DC or PWM, and again, you get the full range of them, and you can still get them down to about 400 RPM. So it's, the fans themselves are actually pretty darn cool. The hub itself is a little bit mental, and there's a few things to kind of get your head around. One of which is, normally on these remote controls, there's normally a button in the top that says MB, which switches from motherboard control to remote control, which makes sense. It's not why it's boxing. <laughs> no. And... Uh, this doesn't have it. So if you plug in the four pin PWM or the ARGB header into your motherboard, it automatically passes through and it almost entirely ignores the remote control unless you press the off button, then turn it back on, then you can manually control the fans, which is weird, but not with the PWM. If the PWM connector is connected to a motherboard all control in terms of fans even though you've got three buttons on there is done through the motherboard so essentially for this particular instance i would say don't plug in the pwm controller it's probably not worth it especially if you're using other fans i would probably not use this hub with other fans I did this review on this before, and uh, it was a little bit weirder then. It was a different version. This is version 2. Version 1 did have the MB button, so you could switch control, but the fan RPMs just didn't work properly at all. But bizarrely, with these Velocity fans, or any other 3-pin fan, they work absolutely flawlessly. But with 4-pin fans, not a hope in hell. So, with all that said... Let's get this fired up and you can see what these fans are like also. Oh, I should also point out as well, under £30 for three fans, hub, and also you do get an additional addressable RGB strip, which has got a 3M tape on it. Again, this is very much of an era as well. Back in the, uh, the tens, the late tens and the early twenties, uh, these were very common. Some people still use them now. So these are magnetic and also self-adhesive. I'm pretty sure it's magnetic. I should just check that. Yeah, magnetic. There's little magnets uh, every so far actually inside there. So for some cases, it's really cool to have a little bit of a down light effect at the bottom or at the top shining down, whatever you want to do. Usual stuff, pass-throughs there so you can daisy chain them, etc. Nice long cable there. So yeah, you kind of get the idea. It's not a new thing. These have been around for donkey's years. But it's quite nice that if you get all of it in a kit for what is relatively little money, £30 or under, from uh, Amazon, I think, had them, didn't they, Calf? Is that right? Sorry? Did Amazon have these? They did, didn't they? Um, Amazon UK. UK. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, under £30, so three fans, a controller, and an, a thing. So, if you say the hub's worth, I don't know. Well, you could say that everything is worth, what, six, seven pounds? The fans retail for about six or seven pounds on their own. So say seven each, so 21, maybe, I don't know, five to 10 quid for a hub. These on their own are normally about four or five quid. So it's not a huge saving, but it's actually quite a nice little bundle. But the thing which is most impressive is what these fans actually look like powered up, which I should show you now, but I'm gonna have to work out how to do this. So it might involve a screwdriver and you seeing my butt crack again. But it's all in the name of science, so we'll do it anyway. This is one of the things I like actually about the, uh, the Thermal Take Series 500. A couple of screws, and I've got full access 
to my uh, power supply. Dialysis would be good if we could upload pics of our PCs. Discord? Yeah, you can, yeah. On the Discord, you can upload the pics of your PCs. Do it to your heart's content. Bang. Right, let's plug in a couple of these. Yeah, Molex connectors and a, uh, a three pin. It's not a good start, is it? But bizarrely, it works really well on this hub. And Mike, can you, not you, but Hi. Mike on there. Yeah. Just bought the Razer. Uh, Mike. Just bought the Razer Chroma ARGB controller off eBay. I'm just so confused by Game Max controllers. And they're like, yeah. Game Max controllers are very much a bit of a kind of a dark art almost. Which is what which is why I quite like this as a set. It kind of takes the guesswork out of it because uh very much like NVIDIA stuff, it kind of just works. <laughs> it doesn't. So there you go, there is a fan lit up. And currently we we're not plugged into the motherboard at all. So it's completely separate. And it's actually moving quite a lot of air, surprisingly. And noise wise, just the normal sound of air, which is pretty cool. Nice as well the fact that you can mount these either way up. So if you have it fan facing down, you still get RGB lighting. Fan facing that way, you still get the RGB lighting coming through. So wherever you mount them that way or that way, doesn't make any difference. Paler, it? it is a little bit paler on the back side. So I think the RGBs are mounted towards the front and being that it's just opaque, it shines through. So let's go with auto. This is what I was saying earlier about the addressable RGB. So now you can see all Looks of the like individual LEDs. Fan. Sorry? Looks like a Sharkoon fan. Yeah, it kind of does actually, yeah. Like one of the Shark Eyes ones. So it's got a really nice look to it. And again, you can kind of almost count the individual LEDs so you can get all of the colors on there at the same time. I really like it. I like this design. I know it's a little bit older now. I'm pretty sure these come out in 2019. But I think it works really well. And with the remote control, you can just turn the lighting off if you want. And you've got the fan control. So that is on low which is pretty much whisper quiet, medium. And I like the fact you get a bit of feedback as well. So when you press a button, it flashes to say, yep, I've received your information. That is good. I like that. Because otherwise you're kind of like, have you bloody worked or not? So that is on medium. Oh yeah, it's changed caps as well. A little bit more noise there. More of the sound of air moving than the actual fan blades. There is a bit of noise in the fan blades. And full speed. Now, when you get to full speed, there's definitely a bit of a buzzing going on. And you can feel the actual impeller. Oh, cast control right now. <laughs> I wonder what the hell was going on there. It's like, what the... the? <laughs> See, calf has got a Game Max case, the F-15. Can you do speed? No, speed's at the bottom. Three fan pictures. Oh, have you not got fan speed on there? I've got fan plus and minus. Oh, try that, yeah. That's what's doing that. Yeah, right, so that's not compatible then. All right, stop it. You're going to press it again, aren't you? You want to press it, don't you? Just turn it off now. Great. Right. There we go. Back down to uh, sensible speed from ludicrous speed. So, yeah. I think these are actually really cool. No pun intended, because they're obviously... They are fans. So, you've got multiple blades there, which actually does help. They've not got the highest of static pressures to them. And they maintain, bizarrely, that they move, I think it's some crazy amount in there. They're saying 94.3 uh, CFM. I 
Yeah, I have no idea where they get that figure from. 94 CFM. I've got no way of measuring it, so I can't say categorically that they don't. But I find it hard to believe, being that some of the best fans on the market don't do that. And it's not as if they're moving a lot of air. Like, on full blast. It's not like a hurricane. It is moving a decent amount of air. And I think what they've done right as well, the blades on the back, only four blades... Like with the CT-140s earlier, that is going to make airflow much better, less uh, restricted or impeded, and there's less risk of turbulence. But most people are probably going to set these to low and be done with it and just enjoy what they look like. And it, even at low speed, they are moving a reason. I can feel that quite happily. It is moving some air. So yeah, I think this is a pretty decent option as well. If you don't necessarily want the full flexibility that you get with PWM and individual ARGB controls like with the john's bow fans this i think is a good contrast to that because there's always that thing i love it when i sell a pc somebody comes around and they look at it and they're like Ooh, pretty lights and all that kind of stuff but then also you say to them oh put like pass on the remote control and i say well change the lights if you want and they're like oh, colors rgb stuart's bought a teddy bear stuart's bought a teddy bear Thank you, Stuart. Why? Oh, what, the teddy bear from the uh, the Cap and Mike teddy bear? Yeah. Oh, bless you. See what I look like. But I'm <laughs> in a few videos at the beginning. Yeah. If you want to see what Calf looks like, look on the Mike's Unboxing channel and just to search for snow and you'll see Calf hula hooping. Or actually, search for hula hoop. And There's... I was in the one waxing you. Yeah. And I was in... The hula hoop one's the best. You can, see, you can get a better That's idea. That's just me. I've got a weird bit of hair just hanging over my ear weird. <laughs> it's snowing. Anyway, I like the look of these. I think they're pretty darn good. I want to stick with these Leanne Lee ones. I think you've made the same choice there, Colin, to be fair. But if you think of it, the Leanne Lee ones, you're probably paying £30 almost for a fan. Whereas with this, you get the whole set. So there is the, uh, the economy of scale if you're perhaps needing a lot of fans but as with everything that is pc it is always going to be a matter of uh, just get whatever suits you if you like it and it works for you that's freaking awesome uh, i think these i kind of miss the look of these type of fans we don't see this enough these days i'm trying to think of the name of it there wasn't like a name they gave this style of fan it's like turbo something yeah, because Sahara, uh, Sahara, Sahara Gaming did the uh, the pirate fans, Pi pirate duo, I think they were called, where they had both sides. I think they were made by the same company, to be honest with you. But they're pretty quiet for what they are. And actually, they are moving a reasonable amount of air, which is ultimately what you're kind of buying a fan for. So... There you go. That is the Velocity, Game Max Velocity or the Game Max 3-in-1 ARGB kit. You get hub, you get... Actually, let's light up the old addressable RGB strip. There is a, a moderately funny story attached to RGB strips. When, um, in the early days of Mike's unboxing... Halo fans. Halo fans, thank you. Who said that? Firestorm. Firestorm, bless you. That is the exact answer I was looking for. Thank you. Nick Barnes asks, waxing, is that wipe on, wipe off? It's like they're actually no. de-hairing you. De-hairing, yes. <laughs> that was before we had 100 subs. So there is the, um, the addressable RGB strip. <laughs> so again, if you want to put that into your PC somewhere and get a little bit of extra lighting. For this, I think we do need actual unicorn puke. There is something quite magical about unicorn puke, I think. I don't know why. But I do like it. It's just bright and jolly, isn't it? But having said that, you don't have to do that. You can just go for a full-on bright, bright white vest. Those are actually quite bright LEDs, aren't they? They're actually that bright that they're they haloing. They are sparkling a little bit. Yeah, if you look at them on an angle, or an angle, they change. if you move them, they, uh, you can see the RGB, can't you? You see the blue. You can see colours in them. See colours in them, yeah. 
Well, that's how they make it white. It's basically all the colours on at the same time. Doesn't that make manky? Why don't it wait, make white when you mix all the Play-Doh up? <laughs> um, good question. Yeah, you can see the colours, can't you? In the, if you? Look on the side, you can actually see greens at the bottom, reds in the middle and blues on the top. At least I can. See, I can see something. Just nothing of actual any use. Those are really nice. They're actually blowing a reasonable amount of air. Anyway, that's enough of that nonsense. Let's put that away. All PCs should have this dash panel. I think it's a very good idea. Especially when it's moderately functional as well. I think I need to actually. Oh, that's what. Yeah, Bob got those, didn't he? Those little magnets. I could put magnets on there to magnetise that so I don't have to put screws in every time. Where's William Bodie tonight? I don't know. Where is William Bodie tonight? Yes, unlike Mr. Bodie, he's probably got a family visit. What's happening in Germany at the moment? I don't know. He might be working. He might be working, you never know. Bloom yeah, it's, it's Bloom Fiesta. What's Bloom Fiesta in German? Um, because you can speak fluent, can't you? On your CV. Well, balloon is balloon, isn't it, in German? Is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Because remember that uh, 99 balloons? 99 Luft Balloon. Yeah. Hey Siri. What is the German word for balloon? In German, balloon is Ballon. Ballon. Thank you very much. Bless your heart. Uh, what was the other word? <laughs> yeah. Hey Siri. What is the German word for festival? Ballon fest. I found two results in German for festival. Fest. Ugly Bob must be Hang so. On. Fest. Festival. So it's basically balloon festa. No. <laughs> yeah, balloon fest or balloon festival. No, there. Ballon fest. There. Absolutely fluent in German. Ugly Bob must be fluent. And how many languages can Ugly Bob speak? He knows them all. When he gets drunk, he adds a few more to it that don't even exist. New undiscovered languages. Oh. He could speak fluent ass. <laughs> <laughs> Should be in politics. The beers. Four languages, five when I'm drunk. Nice. Colin Hilton says, at Cafe Churchill, I could do with some slimming tablets to get rid of my spare tyre. If only it was that easy. If only. <laughs> we wouldn't be doing YouTube if I could yeah. make slimming tablets. If, if, yeah, if there, was, if there was a thing such as a, called a slimming tablet, um, the world would be a very different place and there's somebody somewhere would be an absolute trillionaire. Next thing you know, you'll be saying the world's round. I speak three languages, David Underhill. English, Aussie and... American? Nope. Oh, and you cheat. And profane. Twinkle in the 70s. 99 Red Balloon song by Twinkle. How oh, was it in the 70s? The only one I ever heard was... Um, Nina. N yeah, Nina. 99 Love Balloon Go By. I didn't know she was German, though. I thought she was... I think she was. I'm pretty sure she was. I could be wrong. Ask. Was... Hey... Siri. Hey, Siri. Was Nina of the 99 Love Balloons fame German? In German, Nina of the 99 Luft 
Balloons Finest. Nina von den 99 Luftballons in Ordnung. <lacht> That's right. You are, you've got the question right, Siri. You, oh. get, you get another day. Oh, Viali, I'll make him. Viali, Cafe is now making you a member so you can post pictures in La Discordio. That's Italian, not German. Right, packing away things is fun. Ich bin crank of doing it now. Yes, yeah, so I thought she was. I knew she was in English, but I didn't know. She... Of course she's German because she got ninety nine Luft balloons. You don't get ninety nine yeah. Luft balloons as a bloody no English person. Well, there was in the German version. I'm sure there was a different version and it was German. I don't know. I give up. I'm too old for this. Sing Jula Taxi then. Jula Taxi! <coughs> oh, that hurt. That really hurt. Right then. Moving on. Right. Here's my tick list. Well, I go through the paper because I'm on a mouse mat. Don't write on mouse mats, kids. It doesn't work. Aww. So laptop does not repair, correct? Velocity ARGB. At the topics, I've only got two more things to cover, and then I can go home. I am home, but you guys can. Can you answer the question? What a question? Uh, I have a problem with a new PC. Did someone think he can help me? Wow. Um, a bit difficult to do on a live stream, but if you want to head over to our Discord, which Kath is now going to put a link in the chat. I don't think there's one recently. But we will put a link in our Discord chat so you can ask your questions. And if somebody is in there who is willing to help, they will do. If not, I will try and have a look a little bit later on. And as Ugly Bob says, head over to Discord. Oh, sorry, Discord's that way. It's my computer's over there. Right, moving on to the last two topics. So the first one is a very simple one. Uh, basically running out of review ideas. Because the market has got very stagnant. There's not really a great deal happening. Now, fortunately for us... It's been a bit of an upturn in cases at the moment because there's a lot of different cases on the market. I think shipping costs have come down a little bit. So we're starting to see more cases coming into the market. So that is a good thing. We've got two case reviews coming out, uh, which we've done this weekend already. So that's the IONS KZZ, which we looked at previously in a uh, stream. And also we've got the Game Max Infinity. So those two are coming out shortly. Of course, we've had the Thermal Take, the Sirius T500. We also had the Series 300, uh, the Series 500. I'm sure there's another one we've had. Oh, the one from um, ASUS, the AP201. That's also out as well. So there's a few case videos coming out. Those are starting to kind of appear slightly more regularly now, so that's a good thing. But what other things do you want to see on the channel? You don't necessarily have to answer now in the comments. Uh, chances are I probably won't get to see them all anyway. But if you can, if you're watching this as a, a video on demand, please in the comment section, if there's something specific you want to see or whether you're quite happy with the way the content's going at the moment where we're doing kind of like a very mixed bag. So we're sort of going with the flow of what is available on the market. But also I am kind of almost actively avoiding problem areas such as at the moment power supplies because they're too expensive and graphics cards because same thing. So on the, couple, yeah. on, the, on the budget side of things, happy to take a look at things. On the upper end, I still feel that there's a lot of things on the market. Obviously, 4000 series and even the 7000 series Radeons, uh, 4000 series NVIDIA, 7000 series Radeons, I still feel don't really deserve that much kind of coverage at the moment because of the pricing. So... Um, Okay, David and Drill, good idea. That is definitely something we can take a look at. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things. There's things I want to look at and there's things that I don't want to look at, which I do to some extent feel bad because I shouldn't really be dictating what you get to see. But on the flip side of it, I think that if there's something which I'm interested in or are, I'm passionate about, then the video is going to be more beneficial to you because I have actually got a vested interest in it. And it's either cost me money or 
I'm trying to make a recommendation. So that is what I'm trying to do. And also, we would like to do more fix and fails, but... Yeah, fix and fails are very hard to do because basically people don't want free help. <laughs> Not very trusting some people, but I understand it entirely. So anyway, if you've got any review ideas, please, please let us know. And it kind of tells into the last topic, which is um, probably going to be one of the most divisive ones that we've discussed. And that is, is AM4 worth saving or using uh, in... 2023, 2024. There's going to be a massive debate. Obviously, AM4, they've released essentially the last processor that is likely to see. There may be some rejig of older stuff on the market, but stock is starting to run out. Motherboards, especially, not going down in price. If anything, they're starting to rise again. You've got the usual ones, the B550 Gaming Plus, the uh, Gigabyte gaming v2 uh, what was it gaming ax those kinds of things we've been there done that they're still very popular and they still sell very well they're in the top 10 list on amazon etc so those are still things which we might revisit but prices are basically the same as what they were when we recommended them previously so not really a great deal to change there at all but i wanted to really kind of gauge the viewers response to it AM4, do you still want to see AM4 stuff? Um, do you still see it as being a valid platform? I know there's going to be some of you out there watching which are maybe still on AM3 or older uh, Intel Core stuff, in which case AM4 is something you actually aspire to get onto. Totally get it. But in terms of the mainstream, especially uh, England, Europe, kind of we've got to the point where AM4 now, we know it's a dying platform. It's not dead as such, but it is basically not going to get the same amount of coverage. As soon as the motherboards are gone, most of the manufacturers, uh, MSI, ASRock, Gigabyte, ASUS, have all come out at various times and said that they're not putting any extra resources. If anything, they're going to be actually reducing resources on product lines, product development, and also product updates for the AM4 platform. So potentially there is still going to be some life left in it, we're going to see diminished updates. It's going to be mostly security updates. We're not really going to get any more advancements in terms of the platform, which it doesn't really need because it is a very mature and a very nice platform. And I've said it before, and I'll reiterate it now just for clarification. If it wasn't for the fact that I do YouTube videos and I needed to try AM5 to see what it was like, there's no way on God's green earth that system would be there. That would still be an AM4 platform Probably the 3900X or the 5800X, maybe even a 5600X, because I don't really need much processing power in there. The fact that I've got a newer platform, yes, is great, but with that does come the other things, which obviously the bug finding, the crazy stuff going on. Weirdly, at the moment, after installing the RX 6600, it's as stable as I've ever seen it. So it's kind of odd. Normally I get to this point where I start the stream up and I'm like, oh God, the cameras are all going crazy or I've got this low FPS thing going on. Tonight, set up OBS, done lots of other things, went away, did other things, added the monitor, etc., And it's been absolutely rock solid. And it's still, the CPU is using 0.1% CPU. We've dropped absolutely zero frames and OBS is running in H.264 rather than H.265. So it's actually having a harder job. So yeah, AM4, I still feel a very valid platform. DDR4 RAM is pretty much now the cheapest it's ever been. Potentially we might see kind of one last hurrah when it comes to what? Prime Day. Hurrah! <laughs> uh, when it comes to Prime Day, we might see that again, some more price drops. I don't envisage it getting much cheaper. Some places are going to be clearing stock, but I think it's kind of pretty much plateaued at the moment for the majority am5 uh, sorry ddr5 ram is starting to drop a little bit further as well so that it's going to get to the point where it's kind of going to make sense to go ddr5 if you possibly can so that is the um that is the kind of state of play am4 stuff do we still continue doing it i might do you still want to see on the channel me getting am4 motherboards doing am4 builds 
or would you rather see a switching over to maybe Intel 13th, 14th gen, 12th gen, um, or over onto AM5, or are you just quite happy to kind of mix and match it and whatever comes along, if it's a good deal, or if we feel it deserves a little bit of attention to do it that way. Again, kind of really relying on you lot, seeing what it is you like. I found recently, well, we've actually made a little bit of a change, especially this week, I think it is more so. So we did notice, well, me mostly, but I think Calf probably has done as well, looking at our YouTube video stats, normally we get from the very first couple of seconds, from um, the first 30 seconds is generally the biggest drop off. So kind of looking at our videos now, we're, I was looking and seeing, well, what, what happens in the first 30 seconds? other than me introducing myself and talking about the product. And the one thing that I did notice, which happens generally within that first very small segment, is you get the mics unboxing jingle. So I've experimented um, this week with a few videos where basically that's gonna be gone. So you'll still get the, hi, I'm Mike, this is mics unboxing, blah, blah, blah. And on today's video we are, but rather than having that gap where we have the mics unboxing jingle, we're gonna head straight into the product information, the review, and just get fired straight into it. So we will be looking at that. I know there's gonna be some people who are, are gonna be so used to watching the videos over the years and so used to seeing that segment, the intro, then the video, that some people might be a little bit jarred by it, but hopefully it's gonna be one of those things where it gets more view time. Ideally, we don't want people to stop dropping off from the video until after maybe the first minute. The first minute is fine, because at that point, it might be the fact they just, they've looked at the product, they're a little bit interested in it, they've seen the opening intro, and they're kind of like, actually, I don't think this is for me, and they switch off, that's fine. But if they're getting to a point where immediately in the first few seconds, they're like, within 30 seconds, they're like, no, I'm out. That's not good for obviously retention of viewers and YouTube passing the videos on, etc. Because YouTube looks at it and says, well, people don't want to watch after 30 seconds, so screw you, basically. So that's not what we want to do. So that is what um, I'm attempting to do. It's tough because I'm so used to saying it. When you've been doing something for so long, normally anything you do for 30 days or more becomes a habit. And I've been doing the Mike's Unboxing intro for, what, three years now, at least, in the format it is. I'm looking at Kath and she's like... It's longer yeah. than that. It's probably it's like four or five years, isn't it? Most of it, I think. Yeah. So, Kath always wondered why I did the intro the way it was and why we had that little bit. And to be honest with you, I think I was mostly trying to copy other YouTubers and it seemed like a cool thing to do. But in hindsight now, I understand that from my own viewing if I watch you a video, like a two minute how to video, people don't want yeah, you do, yeah, waste you, 30 seconds of watching. If you're trying to work out how to change the time on your Fitbit, you don't want to have a five to 10 second jingle. You just want the information or to get in towards the information. So that is what we're trying to do. Uh, Nick Barnes says, what about the intro first? I mean, it's your signature, just like the halo for Roger Moore. Well, what we've done is, um, in order the jingle in the closing credits yeah. and include a clip of the award. Yeah, that's Doesn't true. That. <laughs> no, I might, yeah, put the, put the jingle in the closing credits and include it. I'm actually tempted, I might even do that. Because <laughs> at the end, you obviously get the options for watching the other videos which we've got. So we could have the two videos on a Mike's Unboxing logo with the award or I don't know, something cheesy like that. We might do. At the moment, the Mike's Unboxing jingle, the sting thing is at the very end. So if you get to the end of the video, Whilst you're being offered other content to watch, you'll get the uh, the jingle. So it still is in there, but you have to wait to the end if you really like it. You've still got the thing where Mike's unboxing things switches across, and yeah, that's all in there. So yeah, hopefully it's uh, it's all going to work out well, work out better for the channel, get a little bit more watch time in those early few seconds, which is where you really want to kind of captivate people. So yeah, if you notice changes in the videos, uh, let me know what you think about it. Obviously, for those of you that are on Patreon or YouTube members, you'll be seeing this probably before anybody else. I'm not sure if I did it in the Series 300 video. I might have done. can't remember. It's been a busy old couple of weeks. But anyway, just so you know, we are looking around at things that we do and trying to kind of modify and adjust and make it better so that 
it's basically more interesting or you get more value out of the content hopefully you do and we also go through looking at links as well so if there's any links which you find in videos which don't work let us know just uh, leave us a message we won't take it as uh, you being like I don't know what the word is, like being a dick about it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things. It happens. Links do fail from time to time. Products get changed. So please do. If you watch any of the videos, it. click on the link for your country. If it doesn't work, just say it doesn't work, X country, and we will try and fix it. And actually, we're very thankful for it because effectively, you lot out there are our proofreaders. So if we make a mistake, we're unlikely to see it or know about it until one of you says it. When I tell you edit the video and I've not noticed yeah. the motherboard box is upside down. Yeah. They've done that that was one of the classics. So that is, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Let's have a look see what he's saying. Uh, AM4, long may it continue, says Mark Berry. I agree, to be honest with you. I think that's the way forward. The award is a must. I might do that. I might do it. I, I'm... Because we're coming up to 100,000 subs, I am tempted to get the t-shirts done again and do like a special edition one with like maybe the award-winning mics unboxing and the picture of the, the YouTube silver play button or something stupid like that. I don't know. I get all these crazy ideas going around my head. I agree with Danielle. Danielle says, I prefer the product reviews without constant music in the background. I don't watch the product reviews with the music soundtrack in the background. Yes, I, I'm i very much of the uh, the same opinion there. You find that it's those are more targeted. So you find younger generation... Now, Danielle, I don't know how old you are, so please don't take this the wrong way at all. But I think videos um, without background tracks or music are aimed towards a slightly older demographic, whereas the ones with the kind of pumping bass line or music or something funky going on are more aimed at the younger generation who are used to multitasking so they're used to listen to music whilst typing an essay whilst having a conversation whereas some of us in the slightly older generation are kind of more Chilled. focused i suppose you would say but on single things so if you have too many distractions it's hard to actually leverage the information you want from the video whereas the younger generation seem to be fine with that i don't know whether We've got more on our minds as we get older because we have other things to think of. I don't know, whatever it is, but it does seem to be that the the kind of the background music thing is very much a, a generational thing, or it appears to be. Nick Barnes, I would buy that T-shirt for sure. Wholesome stuff. Nick, David Andrew says, "I'm not old. I am 12 with 56 years of experience." That's a great way of looking at it. Uh, Danielle says, I am up there in age. I am usually watching with a guitar in my lap, practicing my own tunes. Well, that makes sense as well, because you wouldn't really want to have other tunes whilst you're creating your own tunes. So that does make perfect sense. Patrick LaBelle says, the A620 motherboard are starting to be very affordable and seems to be quite competent for gaming with 7600 or 7700 AM5 CPU. These low-cost motherboard might be a good starting point for some inexpensive gaming system. Very much thinking along my um, my own wavelength there. I have been looking for motherboards. It's really difficult. I was looking at A520s, and there's not really any A520s which are full ATX. They're all micro ATX boards. Hopefully there's going to be some larger A620 boards, because I don't really like micro ATX in an ATX chassis. And it seems that at the moment most of the things I have are ATX full size. So it's actually quite difficult to um, to get something which matches up. Although, realistically, by the time you put a graphics card in, you can't really see the bottom anyway. So does it matter? Maybe not. Tristan G, multitasking isn't real. Uh, one can only really do one thing at a time, computer or not. Yeah, I think that... Um, most of us have got to the point where we we have the ability to multitask, but we don't do any of those tasks necessarily well, particularly well, or we don't excel in them. That's why when you cook a meal, you aren't thinking, oh, I've got to see to the kids, I've got to do this, yeah. I've got to do that, blah, 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 blah. So 
you do all those jobs badly. Uh, well, I would do all those jobs badly, whereas yeah. you just do the one thing good. Uh, Scrooby F says, change is nice sometimes. It's good that you're continuing to perfect the product. Well, perfection is a long way off, but I do try and strive for some level of production quality. Uh, something actually which is really annoying me is white balancing. I really struggle with white balancing on the camera, and um, you can see at the moment, looking at the, uh, the image there, the camera does not like the ISO. Uh, there's quite a few hot spots there, or overexposed I think it probably is, but anyway. ultimately I, I always come back to the thing, look at the Blair Witch Project, when that came out the Blair Witch Project was shot on basically like a Sony Handycam in night vision <coughs> and or grainy black and white and was possibly one of the best or most viewed films of that year and for quite a while and it was shot absolutely horrendously and the reason why it did well is because it had a good storyline it was captivating and people were interested and they, they saw it through so it doesn't necessarily always matter about the production quality as long as the content is there so it's trying to find the right balance of having sufficient content or quality of content at a reasonable level so that at least you can listen to it and you can see it and it's clear and you can hear it I think that is the kind of the, the main thing. David Underhill says, is white balancing affirmative action? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It might be, you never know. That's another thing we missed, was where our little graphics boy at the casualty was very good with cameras and computers, yeah. wasn't he? So, but the software side of things, and he knew a lot about cameras, so he'd always help us. It's very true. Oh, little Stephen. David Andrew says, I always find it funny that monster cases still have ITX mounting points. Yeah, that was, uh, I did find that quite funny. And, uh, yeah. The series, no, not the series, the CTE 750 and the T500 Air. Both absolutely monster cases. Like, best part of two and a half foot, boy, two and a half foot. And yet they still have tiny mounting for an 11 inch motherboard, which, well, not even 11 inch, I think they're smaller than that. It's, yeah, it just blows my mind that someone would actually, at the design stage, consider that someone might put an ITX motherboard into one of those monster cases. But yeah, put it in as an additional motherboard with another system, but not as a thing on its own. It's nuts. Uh, Squibius says maybe those people just come to see the jingle. Um, <laughs> if they do, as much as I'd appreciate them watching the jingle and uh, finding the time to find the channel, I don't think they're really the kind of viewer that we're trying to attract or kind of appeal to. If you're looking for just the jingle, then maybe you should have an appointment with the men in white coats. Yeah, that, the jingle's actually given us nothing but grief. Well, not nothing but grief, but it's been... Um, it used to always be, or uh, content cop copycat, or uh, guru. technical guruji. And it's like, it's free YouTube music. Anyone can use it. Just because someone's got it in their video doesn't necessarily give them the, uh, the entire it. rights to use it forever. Content cop doesn't even exist anymore. So it's not as if that it's like that's even... Yeah. Most people now on the internet probably wouldn't have a clue who content cop is. It used to be a really that's big thing. That's probably why it's the 30 second thing, isn't it? Because that's all TikTok-y. Yeah, it's the, attention, the attention span is very low. So trying to get people in and hooked and kind of enjoying the content is kind of where it needs to be. Christ, I just realised the time. can't believe how long we've gone on for. Oh, well, I have actually ticked all of my boxes and potentially add some fun at the meantime. Turn off camera. Yeah. <laughs> End stream. stream. Uh, accept award <laughs> in crystal. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, again, massive thanks to all of you for joining us on this Saturday evening. 
Hopefully you've had a moderately enjoyable time, you've had some fun, you've had some laughs, and you've actually seen some products that you potentially might even want to buy. And also, big shout out as well to uh, our friends at Thermal Take UK for this award. That's still pretty cool. I do like that. A bit dangerous though. <laughs> Definitely going to hurt myself on that at some point. And or find one of the cats impaled on it. It's not a nice thought. Anyway. 200k to get Mike his gold watch. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be pretty cool. So, thank you all so much. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button as always. Like I said in the video, or if you can remember this far back, it was almost four hours ago. Flipping hell. Um, we are going to try and do something with Colin Hilton and try and uh, help out there with PC build, either some parts monitor keyboard mouse whatever it is to uh try and help out there wherever we can if you want to find out more about that ideally i'm guessing head over to the discord i think it's probably going to be more for discord members generally um but if uh, for some reason you can't get hold of us there or you want to do something else then feel free obviously email address at the bottom there mike at mikesunboxing.com generally it's better if you can just grab me on discord it's a quicker and easier way to do it and it's actually a pretty cool place to be some lunatics in there but they're admins so not much you can do about that <laughs> um yeah i think that's gonna wrap things up thank you all for your super chats your kindness and your continued support of the channel and onward and upward to 100k which hopefully the way things are going could be this year hopefully before christmas that'd be awesome that'd be a fantastic christmas present to us both i think to get to 100k not that it makes a great deal of difference but it's kind of one of those things it's like yes right. you've actually got somewhere that you never thought that you'd get to or at least you didn't think you would but you had the ambition and the dream to get there but you kind of at the time thought well god this is slow going but it's turned around pretty cool so happy days again thanks all of you for uh, making time on your saturday evening to watch the award-winning mike's unboxing <laughs> i can't I can't say the rest of it without laughing, that's funny. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. This is the bit where you get the sting normally. I'm gonna have to try and add that in. I can do that on the Steam Deck, I'm sure. Add the sting in and then I can do the end stream. That'd be much easier. That's a great idea. Let's find the right buttons. Anyway, bless you all. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Ciao for now. Check for now, I can't believe I said that. Anyway, moving on. I've got to press the button, I've got to wait, there's a delay. <laughs>